from the left hash mark, taking the snap, deals it off to Johnson, slips through one tackle, still on his feet, breaking tackles, 40, 45, 50. Johnson in a foot race to the 45, breaking another tackle, 30, to the 25, to the 20, still on his feet, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. He's gone! Hudson Overs! Great win. Great win. Hey, they came to play. We came to play. We made a lot of mistakes. One thing we got to learn from that is we can't let up. Second team goes in the game. You've got to play as hard as you've ever played. We lost our focus. We give them a chance to get back in it. We busted some coverage in the secondary. We made some mistakes. That's first game. First game. You, you improve more from your first to your second game than any time all year. we got a tough one coming up. Let's enjoy this one. Let it soak in a little bit. We'll come back tomorrow and go to work. I'm proud of every one of you. Hey, it's a team. we got to get, keep getting closer and closer together. If we'll do that, the sky's the limit. All right, let's go. Where's the thing? Hey, hey, one thing. This is a game ball. which has been a long time since we had a 100-yard rushing around here. Well, off this line, y'all block your tails off today. Coach Hall, we're taking all that. Off this line, this is y'all. Y'all did a hell of a job. Yeah, well, right. Right. is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Tommy Tupper. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review as we begin a new season. The Tigers on a Thursday night national television game, 31-21 over Wyoming. Coach, there was a lot of new stuff going on at Jordan Hare Stadium. It was exciting. The smoke, the orange in the stands, yeah. the, the new dressing rooms. It was kind of like a, a different atmosphere, but it was fun. It was exciting. But I think our fans really enjoyed it, uh, especially the opening part. Uh, we didn't play great the whole game, but First game of the year, we got the win. We know what we did wrong. Now we can go back and work on those mistakes. And you got so many young people that uh, you, you, you've got some experience now, and that can only be an upside. 23 players, first time ever stepped on that field and played a college football game. That's a little scary. And a lot of them played key roles, too. Played key roles, made some big plays, made a lot of mistakes. But like I said, uh, we'll get better and better. When you're playing young players like that, have enthusiasm, they believe in each other, the sky's the limit. Let's go in the dressing room now and talk to some of those guys. All these young guys, this team's got a great upside, Ben. Yes, sir. Uh, it's got a great upside. You know, we we said all along we want to give this, we want to give all the people this. This is a foundation. We want to give this a base, you know, somewhere to build from. These these young guys are going to take off in a long way. The sneak was really good. You, you converted it every time for first down. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we worked on that all week at practice and stuff, and we just, you know, we really want to get after it and uh, just get that first. It was just time for somebody to make a big play, and we as offense knew that we had to bear down and just. Dig deep and find a way, some kind of way, to make a play. It was just happened. It was a team effort for the whole drive. To me, the line blocked even harder, you know what I'm saying? Knowing you got a back back there that's going to break four and five times. And that last one he had, I mean, I thought he was going down like three or four times. And that, that don't make you want to work even harder when you got a horse back there like that. We got two horses back there, you know? Like, I saw him when he was trying to go for the ball. So, you know, what I was trying to do is not let him get the interception so what I did I just tried to tip it back and I didn't know if, if the other corner was there so that's why I tried to tip it and catch it right away. Boy, ben had that long touch early didn't he? Woo. Yeah yeah Ben has a nice he throws some nice ball you know I, I just I just like to go get him I tell him to throw it up there I go get him <laughs> every time. You got a bunch of these fine young players that can make this team really good down the road. I know it man I, I'm so excited uh, to see all the young people on this team come out and make plays today uh, you know see young guys come out and knock people's helmets off uh, you know, that's unbelievable. You know you made the year-end highlight film tonight. I did. <laughs> I think you did. Yeah, that's great. It's just, you know, one of those things that you have to. A, could you hear the crowd when you went play? I heard the crowd. A little, I heard like after like the first couple seconds, so it made me feel happy though. I hear the crowd go, ooh, up. yeah. What I'm most proud of those guys is their enthusiasm. You saw us out there in the, in the first part of the second half. Guys are flying in the football, young guys making big plays. And that's what we need. We need enthusiasm because when you're down and you're making little tiny mistakes, if you're running full speed, you can correct them. This, this, this team is built around chemistry, you know, and that's all we need. And right now we're, we're living off our chemistry and athletic ability, but we'll get, we, with the experience, we'll get better. 
Okay, let's get right into the uh, action, and we begin with Tiger Walk 2000. First time uh, to make that trek down the hill, coach. Well, it was uh, it was fun. It was a little bit drizzle rain, and, and uh, first time we had rain almost six months. So <laughs> the eagle has landed. All right, that's great. Well, they trained that thing to do it. It's it's amazing. Tiger uh, Tiger performed well the first night. And there's there's our new tunnel coming out in the middle of the stadium. And you see all the orange in the background. I want to thank all the fans for wearing their orange. Uh, just a super beginning of the season. That was terrific. Yeah. Here's the ecstasy. Uh, Rudy Johnson's first carry of his career at Auburn, and uh, the agony is about to follow. It's going to be one of many, and uh, hopefully the next play doesn't happen very often, but uh, you can see the helmet come in right on the ball, right there, and knock it out, and that's just one of those things that happens, and we learn from it, and our defense grew up a little bit from it. A character builder right here on the goal line. Big play from Alex Lincoln right here. Alex, Alex Lincoln, uh, Roger Chambers, uh, uh, just getting a penetration. Whit Smith coming back from shoulder surgery. We had some guys that laid it on the line on defense. Here's a big play from Alex. Took the ball up in there and intercepts it. And probably the play of the game when you look back on it that kept them from scoring on the first drive and keeping us from having to play catch-up ball. And then the quick turnaround right here. 94-yard drive and a uh, good pass. Super catch for Ronnie, and he, he just gets better every yeah, day. amazing. Better and every day. You know, he said in the dressing room, he says, I don't care if I don't catch this many balls this year. He says, winning will be a lot better than catching you know, a lot of passes. He'll get his share. Here's the, here's the defense where you get good pressure. And uh, Alton Moore, young junior college player, coming in and getting his first sack in the first game. And he's going, he will get better uh, just because of being around this defensive group, uh, playing hard. Here's a big throw and catch from yeah. uh, Ben Laird to uh, Tim Carter. Tim uh, got the best speed on the team and uh, it's beginning to catch the ball better and better. You'll see uh, more daylight uh, on these end zone shots uh, uh, on the running plays this year. Well, it goes back to Hugh Nall and his offensive line. Ben Nyland and Cole Kublick at center and Pacello McGarry at guards and uh, Kendall Simmons back from ankle surgery and uh, Colin Sears playing right tackle in place of Tim Castro who's out with headaches. Here's a trick play that uh, they put in for us and they caught us in uh, uh, making mistakes. Larry Casher came up when he should have been back, but again, that's one thing that we need to learn from, and uh, if it's going to happen, you want it to happen early in the season where, where you can uh, work on it in practice and keep them happening in the real critical situations. There's our upperclassman making a big catch, uh, Reggie Worthy. Uh, eight, eight guys caught balls in this game, Coach. He's, he's spreading it around. Well, the thing that Reggie does still so well is when Ben scrambles, he comes to the ball, mm -hmm. comes back to the ball, and Ben realizes that, and he gets a lot of what we call trash catches. And here's a run by... Uh, Heath Evans and Heath was an excellent blocker last night. I think he carried the ball three times. He'll get the ball more and more as the season goes on. And here's here's a play that uh, we run uh, that last year we couldn't we couldn't execute that play. Quarterback sneak sounds like it's easy, but it really wasn't. And, uh, that set up the touchdown right there. Set up the touchdown, and again uh, you got Pacello and McGarry and and uh, Kublik and uh, Ben Nylon at center. Uh, uh, they really had a super game. Here's a big lick by. Stanford Simmons. He twisted his knee early in the game. You can tell he's got an ankle or knee wrap on it, and he's going to be fine, but uh, he wasn't 100% after about the first couple of series. Alton Moore again. Alton Moore on the tip of the line of scrimmage. Uh, DeMarco McNeil made some big plays at defensive line. We've talked a lot about the defensive line, but uh, uh, they're, they're getting better. This is down at the end of the quarter, and Auburn's going to miss a golden opportunity to kick a field goal here. Uh, this is a third and ten play coming up here. Big play in the drive. Keeps it going with a, just a few seconds left on the clock. Super catch from Clifton Robinson. Very good concentration. We get the ball down in, in field goal range, uh, but we take a sack on the next play and kind of knocks us back. 52 yards, I think, is what it was. And it was yeah. wide right. Damon had a good night kicking, and his consistency will get better. Okay, and it's a 21-7 game at halftime. We will be back in just a minute. Oh. You probably noticed earlier in the show that the Tigers have a, a brand new locker room facility at Jordan Hare Stadium. Let's let Coach Tuberville give us a personal tour. This is the entrance to our new locker room. As you can see, it's spacious, very colorful, and what we're excited about is we can dress 80 players for home games, give us enough room to, to move around, stretch, stretch out, and be able to relax before a tough, very tough competition. But we're very proud about the, the area, about how neat it looks, and about how everything in it gives each player an opportunity to, 
focus on what he has to do for, for the game at hand, uh, which would be about two hours after we get to the uh, dressing room. This is our shower and restroom area, which is, uh, as you can see, very colorful and very much needed for 80 players. As you walk into this room, this is some extra lockers. If we want to dress out more than 80 players, of course, we can use this area, uh, which will give them some uh, privacy themselves. This is the room where uh, all the ankles are taped, uh, our training room, along with a, a room that will eventually be used for an x-ray room for, for injuries uh, during the game on both sides, the visitors and home. And this is the area that we'll use for equipment. Uh, Frank Cox and his staff will use to hand out things such as mouthpieces and extra socks and uh, it's very much needed and space needed just to have their own area to pan out things which is needed for game. Very nice. Quick reminder for you Auburn fans traveling to Oxford this Saturday, don't forget to bring your radios. Again this season, the Auburn Network will be broadcasting game coverage with Jim Fife, Charlie Trotman, Paul Ellen, Quentin Riggins via an FM transmitter. You'll find the exact frequency listed in the Auburn Network's website this week, and that address is www.aunetwork.com. Coach, the Tiger of the game. Well, with all the expectations, still uh, it's got to be Rudy Johnson. Uh, he, he hung in there, 170 yards, three touchdowns. What, an opening, what a great opening night. Congratulations to Rudy Johnson, the J&M Bookstore Tiger of the game. Uh -huh. All right, we begin the uh, second half of action, and you're going to see a lot of defense in the third quarter. As a matter of fact, uh, Coach, you held them to minus 11 yards uh, of offense. Uh. Defense played well. Offensively, we didn't play as well as we did the first half of the third quarter. We made some mistakes, and, and uh, some of the drives got stalled. But uh, I thought our, our punter did a good job, Damon, kept him back in the hole. Here we got good pressure on the quarterback, and uh, we had him throwing off his back foot uh, starting the third quarter. Reggie tore board. Uh, some of those guys on the defensive front really turned up at a, turned it up a notch. Clifton did a great job getting upfield on these punts a lot of times early. Well, the number one thing is catching the ball clean, and uh, he likes to go north and south, and that's the big key to a good punt return. Here's an outside running play, and uh, here you can see good blocks from uh, Renzo Diamond, Mike Pacello, even Ronnie Daniels getting a good block at the top. The receivers are getting better at block blocking. That drive stalled on a, another long field goal miss. Here's a Don Perrius Thomas, who in the future we'll call DT because of the length of his name. Yes. Uh, DT will be uh, a, a big name in Auburn football, a 6'3", 220-pound linebacker. He'll make a lot of plays. That was just a short game there. Third down coming. There's a DT again on yes. the sack, his <laughs> first sack in his career. And again, he'll only get better and better. He's a redshirt freshman, 3.5 GPA, great point average. And in Georgia, he's, he's going to be a super player for us. Here's another outside running play. Rudy's needed to learn, turn it up to get his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage and uh, punish those linebackers and DBs because he's much bigger than they are. And here's what we call an inside uh, zone. Again, gets his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. He, he will learn and, and improve uh, every time he takes a snap. Look at the uh, running room here. Here's a good uh, block inside the offensive line. And again, you don't arm tackle number 32. He, Hey, It'll make you pay. Hey, Coach, that's a, that's a sight for sore eyes for Auburn fans well, to see that. We need it. Here's a big play from Spencer Johnson from Silas, Alabama. I tell you, uh, a true freshman, played linebacker. His first week of two days brought him in and put him at DN, and he looks like he's found a home. <laughs> it's amazing. Ten, fresh, uh, ten red shirts and nine freshmen in this game. Coach. That's a lot. Of, I would rather not play that many true freshmen, but uh, uh, we needed to play them just to, just to be able to give us some depth. Here's a good scramble from Ben. Throws downfield to Reggie Worthy coming back from the football. Another trash catch and get and, the first down. And get the first down after the catch. Yeah, big play for the offense. But the drive stalls, and here they come. Here's good pressure uh, from the defensive line. Throws the ball in the ground. Uh, Whit Smith on the coverage and DeMarco McNeil. Here's Tavares Pounds and Reggie Torbo on the sack. You can tell the enthusiasm. These guys are having fun playing football, and that's what it's all about. We, right. we didn't have to have that as much last year as we right. wanted and I think that's going to be a big difference in this team. Here's uh, Daniel Cobb in the game at first time at quarterback and handing off to Ronnie Brown, true freshman and Ronnie tries to get those extra yards and he's got to understand when you're behind in this level of football they're going to try to strip it and, and uh, he turns it over and they come back and make a good play and throw it. We missed a tackle right there. They get the touchdown. Now it's 21-28-14 uh, and uh, 
here comes uh, really a change of momentum in this game. Change of momentum. They get the ball back and uh, throwing it deep. We could have had the interception there of uh, a good play with Rodney Creighton knocking the ball down. They do make a third down and uh, catch here in just a moment uh, for third and 21. Uh, big play and I got them out of a hole and they come back and do a run a little sprint out pass here that we weren't really prepared for uh, and we bust the coverage in the secondary and they get the easy touchdown. So now it's uh, it's crunch time. Crunch time and uh, we're surprised they didn't kick an onside kick but uh, Clifton gets the ball and here we don't have any return call because of our hands team is in the game. He's told to take a knee. So we take over possession here and you can tell we're going to break it wide open. Inside handoff to to Rudy and Rudy breaks three tackles there. Good blocking downfield by, by all the offense. Mike Pacella makes a key block and, and uh, here you can tell number one he just drags number one in the end zone for a touchdown. That was uh, well, <laughs> that that play and and the interception uh, by Alex Lincoln early in the game to stop their drive. Uh, I guess those would be the two key plays. And and, and Ronnie Daniels kick. Yeah. Uh, th those two basically broke their back and and. Uh, Anytime you get behind on the road in the heat like this, and they weren't used to the heat, it, it, it was it was uh, tough on them. But I tell you, they came and played hard. It was a good football team. They'll win a lot of games this year in, in their conference, and it was a good opening game for us. We learned from it. We've got a long ways to go, but uh, we've got nine days to get ready for the next game. And we'll come back with some final comments about that next game after these words. As many young players as you uh, played, you've got a lot of evaluating to do. I guess you need the extra couple of days. And most on the kicking game. Uh, Phil, we, we played uh, mostly the younger guys on, on kicking game situations where they would get the experience, where some did play offense and defense, but it was good to see younger faces out there playing on the special teams to give the older guys a chance to get on the bench, get some water, relax, rest. Last year we didn't have that, have that opportunity. You played three sets of offensive linemen in the first half. Yeah, we did, and uh, that was our plan. We wanted to go in and get as much experience as in the first half as we could last year and the year before. Uh, injuries the offensive line really hurt this team and we don't want that to happen. We want guys to, to have a little bit little experience if they have to go into a game in a critical situation. So so it, pretty much you all you you all have decided we're going to play numbers and we're going to that's what that's the way we're going to play this Well, team. you win with depth, especially in the last half of the season and and in the SEC and it's it's tough. Uh, it's tough when you have to sometimes uh, bite your lip and say okay, second team get out there and play, but They've got to get that experience because in crucial situations when we go down the stretch, we're going to need those guys to play. All right, you're going to Ole Miss, a place that you are familiar with. Yeah, they're going to have an appreciation day for me over there. <laughs> I saw day. the sign. Yeah, and so uh, we're going back. It'll be a fun trip. Uh, it'll be the best team they've had in a long time. Uh, one of the teams they're picking to win the conference. So uh, we're going to have a, a tough road, uh, but we're going to be up to the top challenge. We're going to go over and play hard, play our type of football, and see how it goes. They have uh, they have a lot of experience. You know all those guys because you recruited them. Yeah, they they got a good football team. They got a great running back, two great running backs, and they've got a great quarterback. They've got an, a, an excellent offensive line. Uh, David Cutcliffe done a super job with that football team, and uh, they'll have them ready to play. So uh, we'll have to go over and see what we can do. Last year we lost a tough game. Mm -hmm. uh, go over next this year and see if the ball will bounce our way. And you'll fly on Friday as usual. And fly out on Friday. And and uh, go over and kind of relax and we play a night game and uh, of course this time of year you'd like it for the heat but uh, we'd much rather play an earlier game. So it's uh, the Tigers and the Rebels uh, next Saturday from Oxford, Mississippi. We'll have the replay for you on Sunday. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week on the Auburn Football Review. I mean, in the huddle, you can feel the spirit throughout, throughout the whole team on offense. I mean, in the huddle, they were just unbelievable. They showed a lot of heart and a lot of character tonight. We just wanted it the most, and we just knew somehow the last drive, we had to put some type of points on the board. I can't say enough about our offensive line and the way they're playing right now. They played a great game for us tonight, made holes, made, made, made lanes for Rudy and Heath to run the football. Two tight ends. Here's Leard. Going to hand it off to Johnson. Cuts to the outside. Got his first down and more. He's speeding to the 30. He's at the 20, 15, the 10, the 5. Shakes off a tackle. He's gone. Touchdown, Auburn! Miller looking to throw. Fires downfield. It is intercepted, Auburn, at the 40-yard line. And down is Courtney Rose at the 37. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I 
I try not to show it, guys, but it's hard to show feelings. I love you. We come a long way. It's a pretty good team. 18th ranked team in the country now. It's ranked 55th at the beginning of the year, and we came over here and won the game. A lot of people counted you out in the middle of the third quarter. Thank you, Coach Yox. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listen up, listen up. We had a lot of young guys went in and played tonight. It had to make a difference. It was hot. We got cramps. We had some guys go down. But we played hard and we didn't quit. And that's what Auburn football is all about. It's just hard to say anything, guys. You don't know how much myself and the rest of the coaches, those guys were good to us over there and they fought hard. But we went through some tough times here last year ourselves. And we've grown up a lot in about 20 months. The sky's the limit. You stay together. You trusted and you believed in each other. And that's what it was all about. Keep doing it. You know, it's, I'll get a lot, of, a lot of credit for this game. Hey, I told you when we went out there, we are going to go for fourth down. I told you we are going to kick on side kicks. You believe what I tell you, and I believe what you tell me. You told me you was going to go out there and lay it on the line. You did it. I thank you. is the Auburn Football Review with Coach. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review, a great college football game. Auburn defeating Ole Miss in Oxford by a score of 35 to 27. And uh, Coach Tommy Tuberville, for those nine members of your staff and you and all your families, it's been a, an emotional week and now it's over and it was successful. It was, it's over and it was fun. I appreciate all the Auburn people coming to the game last night. What a great turnout, wearing their orange, uh, the way the players played and reacted and gave it all they had on the field and the best team won the game. We, uh, we dominated, I think, for about, about three quarters. We, we had some lapses. We made a lot of mistakes, but a young team's going to do that. But the great thing about it is we went back to the plate and took our bat again and made up for it. And, and uh, that's how you build character. I know you're proud of the offense, of course, the, the, the way they played, but the defense put it together in the fourth quarter and, and, and held the line and, and won the game. I think a big key feel to the, to the entire game was we played a lot of players. Uh, John Lovett and his staff uh, kept substituting, putting guys in the game, trying to keep them fresh. It was a hot night, very muggy, and we had guys that would go in and play for three plays. When they'd come out, they'd be totally exhausted, and we lost our fluids. and. And, uh, but that happens. But when we played those players, I thought we got stronger in the fourth quarter. And as you heard me talk on the beginning of the show, uh, Coach Kevin Yoxel and his staff do a tremendous job in the weight room and conditioning. And uh, uh, we can't thank them enough. Okay, after that emotional uh, post-game dressing room scene, uh, Coach Tuberville uh, asked the players if they wanted to go back on the field and see their fans, and of course they did. <laughs> Six o'clock start at Vaught Hemingway Stadium, and the team bust over from uh, Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, and uh, first thing to happen, of course, is one of those uh, uh, on the road tiger walks, and the first guy off the bus is the coach. Well, the film here really doesn't give it justice because there were thousands of Auburn fans there, and I, this really got us off to a great start. There, we were expecting a lot more Ole Miss people to be around the buses and stuff, but our Auburn folks were not going to allow that. They just, <laughs> they just covered up the territory. Huh? As you can tell here, there's a large crowd earlier in the show, uh, the largest crowd ever in this stadium, in the state of Mississippi, to watch a football game. Bryce Robinson takes the opening kickoff and runs it back. All 45 yards and a great, great start. 
Two penalties, though, stop this drive. And, you know, that's one of the good things of it. You've got a young team, they're going to make mistakes, but they were able to overcome several problems and still win the game. Well, we had to overcome a lot, and this guy right here we had to overcome, Deuce McAllister. Yeah. He's yeah. a great football player, and there was a tall sweep right there, and we really never adjusted that very well. They made, he made most of his yards off that, his 109 yards. And here you can tell we're jumping around and making plays, and, and uh, here's one of our big mistakes starting out the the, the first quarter we, we roughed the punter and uh, this was just one of two and, uh, this would have given us an excellent field position but that's going to happen when you're being aggressive they're handing it to Deuce McAllister almost every play now and getting down the field they're at the 30 here well we miss a tackle right there and Deuce does that he, he'll make you miss tackles and you have to gang tackle him you have to tackle him high and uh, wrap him up and that didn't happen early but we got a little bit better as the game went on here's a pass to Grant Hurd in the end zone we bust the coverage and you know, they get on the board first Next, uh, next series for Auburn. Here's a new play that we put into Tim Carter, trying to get a little bit more speed uh, on the corner, and uh, they call us for holding and uh, bring it back. But uh, that'll be a good play for us down the road. And here we come back and run Rudy in what we call a truck uh, to the right side, and he picks up good yardage and good blocking. 29 yards on that carry. Big play, and again, we get in the shotgun, probably less tonight than we had in the past. And, they bust the coverage and we get the ball to Rudy down the field and on the swing pass. Okay, here, here's our first and 10 at the 11. First and 10, and just a, what we call a junior high play, running with Heath Evans up the middle. And Heath covers the football up and gets those extra yards, gets his shoulder square. And here's a, a play that's been good to, to us the first two games. Uh, I don't know how many times we've run the quarterback sneak, but Ben Nyland, Mike Vassello, and Hart McGarry have done a super job. And here, here we're talking about it. We, I told the players before the game, when we scored the first touchdown, we'd kick an onside kick. We were going to go for the throw it early, and, and uh, it worked. Uh, Spencer uh, Johnson made the, made the recovery, and uh, that really gave us an opportunity to keep our defense off the field. That was really the main thing. Not scoring points was keeping your defense off the field and, and getting our defense tired. Rudy Johnson making plays, making people miss. And again, he's going to get better and better as the season goes. If he can stay healthy, he's... He's uh, been beat up a little bit. Here's DeAndre Green's first reception as an Auburn Tiger and uh, breaks tackles, and we're going to see a lot more of that young man. He is a big fellow. Big fellow. He's a running back and at playing wide receiver. And again, he, here's a, the next play. We, we run counter, and a big block right there by Hart McGarry on the outside. And again, the offensive line just beginning to dominate. And good run by Rudy. Rudy does the rest. I thought the play calling, but. No Mazzoni and his staff it was excellent. They kept them off balance. And here we come back. And Second quarter now. And they're running Joe Gunn for the first time. And uh, you can tell Joe's kind of dancing a little bit. He doesn't run with the authority that Deuce, Deuce runs, but he, did, he does make plays. And we get him in the shotgun. This is one of our new blitzes that we put in. And uh, good pressure out of Reggie Torbor, and Alton Moore, uh, and Marco McNeil. Just all the front four is having fun. You can tell we're making plays. Well, that uh, play in those guys, those numbers on defense helped in the fourth quarter. Coach. It really did. Here's the inside zone to our base play to Rudy Johnson. And get a six-yard dash and, there. And we, we catch him overplaying it, and, and we get in the shotgun and throw, throw down the field to uh, Marcel Willis on the fade route against Justin Coleman, one of their shorter defensive backs. And he was a guy that we were going to go after a little bit in this game. Got a penalty, and this is a third and 20. Big play out of uh, Reggie Worthy. And again, last week we talked about him catching those trash passes, and he seemed to come down with them. I thought this was a big play. It was like a 30-yard gain. And then we run the inside belly to Heath Evans, and big touchdown. Puts us up 21-7. They're going to answer really quickly. This is, a, this is a scary drive here, Coach, because they run the football and get chunks of yardage. Well, this is uh, Charles Stackhouse, another fine running back they have, and uh, good tackle there. But uh, the thing that we didn't do in, in this drive, as you can tell, we missed tackles. There's a missed tackle. There's another missed tackle. But they're going. The good backs will make you miss tackles, but you have to gang tackle. And I didn't think we did a very good job of it the second quarter. And so very quickly in a six-play drive with uh, McAllister taking it the final yardage, uh, Ole Miss right back into the game, 21-14. And that's the way it is at the halftime. Auburn holding that seven-point lead. Uh, and I didn't feel real good at that point, Coach. Well, we set the tempo in the first quarter, and then we, we let them back in the game. We didn't tackle, and, and we talked about that the second half. Tackling was going to be a big key the second half, and playing a lot of players and staying, staying fresh. Uh, I thought if we could get to the fourth quarter, 
close to the lead, uh, we'd have a chance. We'll be back in just... It's 52,000 uh, and a few hundred, over 52,000 fans there uh, Saturday night, and that was a record crowd for the Rebels. Yeah, it was a good crowd. We had a, had a uh, very spirited crowd, and we had a lot of Auburn fans there. I, I think it was a big-time college atmosphere. And then uh, getting out of there was quite a problem. Of course, it's always a problem, night games at any, any university, but we had, we had a long, rugged trip getting out of there uh, and getting to our plane in Memphis. A lot of traffic, and of course, we'll have 86,000 in Auburn next week and a lot of traffic and everybody wear your orange and show your spirit but one thing I want to tell all the Auburn fans and everybody listening is please wear your seat belts and uh, it's a uh, it's one of those things that sometimes people forget to do but in that kind of traffic and that kind of atmosphere you never know what you're gonna run into yeah. and uh, you know buckle your kids in buckle everybody in and be safe you're right buckle up for safety and take your time on those night games at Auburn or anywhere else college football atmosphere is a wonderful atmosphere and we need to keep things as as orderly and safe as we possibly can how about the tiger of the game coach tiger tiger of the game has to be the offensive line we dominated i think for at least three and a half quarters we rushed the ball uh, over 50 times for 260 yards mike Pacello, uh, ben nile and uh, cole kublik kendall simmons hart mcgarry uh, tim castro and uh, Colin Sears, those guys dominated. Uh, they gave Rudy the holes to run through, and what a fun sight to see. Boy, they had dirty jerseys when they got in. Congratulations to the Auburn offensive line. The J&M Tiger of the Game, presented by J&M Bookstore, Auburn's Tiger of a Bookstore. Quarter opening uh, with Ole Miss with the ball. They uh, won the toss and deferred, so they get the ball, and they made good use of it. They moved right down the field, Coach. They really do. It's uh, you find out a lot about your football team in the third quarter, and I, I thought we came out a, a little bit uh, relaxed. We, we did have a little bit of a lead, but Ole Miss is a good football team, and that's a sign of a good team. They brought it to us and, and brought it to us in a hurry. Grant Hurd is their number one receiver, and watch uh, Romero go to him right here. Well, they went to play action to protect Romero, and uh, Grant's about 6'5". Uh, we recruited him out of Houston, Texas, and he's a fifth-year senior. Big tall guy. Yeah, big tall guy. Been a good player for Ole Miss. And, Here's Deuce over the top. Alex Lingham makes a good top. Good goal line stand here. And we got them fourth and about a foot, and they go to the well one too many times for us. And it's hard to hold Deuce out from one, one yeah. foot. Yeah. <laughs> and they had a good offensive line also. They've got, they've got some seniors on the team. And here's a, one of those uh, inside running plays with Heath Evans. And the defensive lineman got his hand on it and stripped it out. And now our defense has got to come in and make big plays. Sudden change. That's what, that's what we tell our defense. Make a play. And here Romero. Uh, makes a mistake, overthrows it, and uh, Rodney Creighton makes an interception, a good return, gets us back in the game. So Auburn starts now there at the 26-yard uh, line, and they're going to hand it to 32. We're going to start the, the track here now of wearing down their defense. And, uh, we don't run a lot of toss sweeps, but that's one we felt like we'd get on the outside. And we had a little blocking scheme for the defensive ends. Here we uh, uh, go for fourth down, and and make it uh, Reggie Worthy. I think it was fourth and two or fourth and three. In the drive stalls, you have to punt. And I remember Tuesday you saying that Deuce McAllister in every game will make one, at least one big He'll play. He'll make a play. And here's what we did. You, you see, we, we go down. We don't break down. You can't let him get a full steam. What you want to do on, on coverage on him is, is go down and break down, and make give time for your other defenders to get there. You're not going to tackle him one on one. So uh, we talked to our players about not being a hero, but at that time uh, Deuce was a hero. So they take the lead now. They got a six-point lead. They, that, that missed extra point, though, looms large. DeAndre Green across the middle. Uh, we caught him in a blitz and a big play. DeAndre, is, as you can tell, every time he gets off a pile, somebody else gets up slow. Same drive, fourth quarter now. And crossing route to uh, Ronnie Daniels, and they took Ronnie Daniels away most of the game, but he did an excellent job blocking. That put us in a fourth down situation, and they gambled, put their guys inside, stopped the run. We took it outside, and Rudy Johnson goes... 40 yards for the touchdown. And, uh, Keith that, Evans got a great block. Great block on the outside. And uh, there you can see the Auburn faithful. We had a great group. And thanks for wearing your orange. And wear it again this week. Yeah. Uh, we, we might have something going. Uh, there's a toss sweep to Joe Gunn and defensive guys, Whit Smith and Alex Lincoln, Reggie Torbor, uh, all around the ball. These guys look energized, Coach. You know, this looks tired. Well, it, you know, it, when you make a play like we just made on offense, your defense gets. It's a little bit more adrenaline going. There's a big play to Reggie Worthy. That was a third and five. 13-yard gain for a first down. 
third and five and uh, we go for the touchdown on crossing route and Kenyatta Lucas for, for Ole Miss makes a big play and miss the field goal. We miss the field goal and, and they come back and uh, didn't look like Deuce there. That was the same play they've been been hitting us on and uh, we made good adjustments and here we got Reggie Torbo up the middle. Uh, got somebody in the Romero Miller's face and throws it right to Courtney Rose and uh, that was basically it. Uh, we we took the ball in and, and we uh, strangest drive here, Coach. Go 37 yards and s over six minutes off the clock. <laughs> six minutes and unbelievable. There we run a little boot off the fake to Tim Carter and Robert Johnson on the on the completion. Uh, there was a big I think fourth down play where we mm -hmm. we got the first down, keep the clock running. We weren't worried about scoring touchdowns here. We were worried about protecting the football and running the clock. Get down on the goal line now. They're going to sneak it a couple of times and run clock. When you make two yards on the quarterback sneak, you know, you know you're doing something right on the offensive line. You're right. Here we go with uh, Keith Evans up the middle again. Can't say enough about Kendall Simmons on the, on the on that left side and and the Mike Vassell on the right side with their leadership. There's the touchdown. There's Touchdown. the eight point lead that you needed so badly. But they still have an opportunity here. I have mean. an opportunity, and we're on the sideline wondering what we're going to do. Do we take a chance and kick it to Deuce? Do we take a chance? We said, let's go ahead and we played it by the book. Let's go ahead and kick it to him. And great coverage by Don Terrius Thomas, big DT, yeah, and, and uh, Haston, and, and uh, Roderick Hood. Those guys are growing up and growing up in a hurry. Here comes the coup de gras. Great play by Stanford Simmons. And, uh, that interception was looked easy, but it all started with Javar Mills and Reggie Torborn, and those guys getting in the face. And you know, I really don't enjoy that part where <laughs> people pick you up, but uh, uh, that was a relief. Uh, I bet it was. The game's over with, and David Cutcliffe and his team have, have a great football team. They're going to win some games. Going to win some games. And I'm going to get Monrico Crittington there for <laughs> pouring that cold water on me. It took me about 30 minutes to get over that, but uh, that was a fun time for our players and, and our coaches. And, and for all the Auburn family, that, that, that kind of takes, that's one for the whole family. And it just, it, it's fun to go through those. And we'll be back with a final comment. Okay, Ole Miss out of the way. Here comes LSU. Big, this has developed into a rivalry, Coach. Well, the more games you win, the more important they get. And uh, this young team's going to have to grow up quick and learn now, hey, we've got to forget about uh, the previous game. We've got to, they, they don't get any tougher in this coming up. Uh, last year, the way we, we played LSU, they're going to come in with a purpose in mind. Uh, we're looking forward to having a, a capacity crowd, everybody wearing orange, very vocal, uh, big tiger walk. We can get this thing kicked off right, but uh, they don't get any bigger than this one. One of those Saturday night uh, games in Tigertown should be a lot of fun. The Auburn Network uh, will be on the air at 4 o'clock. They'll be broadcasting uh, the Tiger Tailgate show from the Plainsman Park parking lot. So if you're going to the game, you want to get by there and and enjoy the festivities there. And we'll, of course, have the replay for you here on Sunday. See you then. Leard waits for the snap. He takes it. He pitches to Johnson, trying to turn in the corner, still on his feet, breaks away. Johnson to the 40, the 30. Rudy's going to go. The 20, the 10. He's gone. Touchdown, Auburn! All right, guys, good job. Hey, a win is a win. It's hard to go out there and get in continuity when you try to play 60, 65 people. But we got, we got the win, and most that's the most important thing. We got a lot of guys with experience, got some valuable experience. Now we got three games coming up. Back to back is going to be as tough as we'll have all year. And we're going to come back tomorrow, and we're going to get our hats on. We're going to think in hats. We're going to concentrate, and we got to get better. I mean, it's going to be a long grind. We're going to take them one at a time. First one's at home. The first one's at home. That group coming in next week, they're going to be ready to play. Good team. I'm proud of every one of you. Ben. Now, that one, you know, like Coach said, that's a win's a win. This, this ball tonight, those are somebody in week one, he was struggling. He made a big run for a touchdown. Tonight, he did the same thing. Rudy Johnson.
is the Auburn Football Review. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, Jordan-Hare Stadium, the Tigers 31 and Northern Illinois 14. Coach, they say in the showbiz, if you have a good beginning and a good ending, you got a good show. Good hey, show. We got exactly out of that football game what we wanted to. Uh, we uh, played well in the first half. We dominated the first half. We played a lot of players. We played three quarterbacks. I think everybody on the sideline got to play. Got a little close there at the end. Because of that, we got conservative the second half. But again, uh, as you said, a win is a win. We're 4-0, and and we're looking forward to the next game. And with uh, what's on your plate for the next three games, uh, playing more people was a good idea. Well, uh, we've got a new season now. We're 4-0. and Now we start into the meat of the conference race, and uh, we're not as banged up as what we thought we would be. We're, we're pretty healthy. We've got some guys who are struggling a bit, but we've improved. We've gotten better on offense and defense. We've We've actually improved in the kicking game, and everybody thought we'd struggle there, but we, in some areas we've gotten a lot better, so now we're going to find out what we're made of. All right, let's go in the dressing room and talk to some of those players. We've got a lot of guys from rest that need to be. Uh, some guys that are banged up, I hope we've got them some rest, but, uh, you know, it was hairy at the end. Uh, my hat's off to Northern Illinois, the way they play. They're, they're a good football team, and, and they're going to win a lot of ball games. And it looks to me like your role is every time we need a big play, they throw it to you. <laughs> No, it, it, that's just, it just looks like that. That's just the read he makes with, you know, what the defense gives him. He makes the read and just have him to come to me. You know, it was good good to get in there, you know, and get some experience. I mean, that was the last hurdle I had coming back, you know, getting out there and actually just playing and getting some reps. So, you know, I'm happy. You know, uh, still got to work, you know, still a little rusty, you know, which, which is ex to be expected, but, you know. They went about the reverse on the open play. Obviously, you all plan to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. Because, you know, we, we saw on film that, you know, that they, they, they pursue the ball real fast. So, you know, we was like, maybe we run a reverse and let them pursue that way and come back. And that's what they did. So I thought we were going to come back to it again, but we never did. <laughs> I was glad to get the ball, you know. Uh, that first one, I was like, oh, why are you throwing it to me? I saw the guy coming out of the corner of my eye. And I thought I was just able to make something out of it. The good Lord blessed me with some vision, so I got to use it tonight. I mean, this is a play that we work on in practice every day. And just try to keep on getting better at it. I mean... Sometimes the defense flows hard, and sometimes we're able to cut it back. But tonight we're able to just keep it going around the outside. And my, my fullback made a great block. I just read off his block and just saw number green. We just got to learn to put him away. We had him up 24 nothing and a half, and we just got to learn to put him away when we can. And don't let up, regardless of who the team is. And these SEC teams won't be that easy to put away like that. We think I go out there to play hard. We played hard today, but we slapped off in the fourth quarter. And if we could just keep it up in the fourth quarter, then we should be good for the rest of the season. Y'all yeah, missed your buddy tonight. Yeah, I'm out. They, they tried to pick on a young guy or whatever. But, you know, he played good. You know, he kept playing, stuck, stuck your head, and you know, made a big play at the end of the game. That's good for him, isn't it? Yeah, it's my real good from letting him know that he's not going to give up once they start, you know, picking on him a little bit. <laughs> they put me in a little situation. Um, you know, I just kept my head up high. They caught a couple balls on me. But I just kept my head up high, and um, something happened good at the end. Okay, a 4 o'clock start, a muggy day. Coach, I thought it would affect Northern Illinois a little more than it did. Well, it, it, I think it affected both of us, but we needed to play in, in the sunlight because we're getting ready to play some very important games. And with the sun out and hot temperatures, and you can tell we've got a good Tiger Walk going here. It was uh, Alvin Bressler and Connie Frederick, the Tiger Walk celebs that you saw there, and that cute little girl saying, Go Tigers! <laughs> There's a lot of orange in the stands, and I tell you, I wore my orange for the first time, and I think everybody appreciated that, and I'll continue to wear it. We can just keep wearing that orange and show, show our spirit. That's good. That's good. It was uh, nice to be playing in daylight. I mean, it's, college football was meant to be played in daylight. Coach. I think so. Here you can tell they weren't going to kick it off to Tim Carter deep. They weren't going to give him a running start. And they kind of pooch kicked it, what we, what we call, and uh, we take it, and we go to work. And the thing we wanted to do on offense was establish a running game first. We wanted to catch him off guard with this reverse to Ronnie Daniels, and what a great run. Made to work on our blocking here with Ben and, and uh, <laughs> Ben Nyland and Ben Leard, but a good run by Ronnie, and again, I think that'll, that'll uh, keep people on their toes a little bit, uh, people down the road. Obviously, they had seen the Carter have all those good runs. And Here's a <laughs> big throw and catch to Reggie Worthy. Continues to make big plays, and what I think he's one of the most valuable players on our offense the first four games. Now, they get a pretty good drive going here. They, their offense is not bad, Coach. Well, I tell you, they, they've got a good, good football team. They're well coached. They stay after it. And here's a play we've been having a tough time with, the, the bootleg. And uh, Rob Pate really plays it well and pulls them up. And we're going to continue to have to work on that, that play and play it well. And here's a toss sweep. And Reggie Torbor and Alex Lincoln making plays. They're getting close to the goal line. It gets a little nervous here. But 
they get into a third down situation, they're going to run the speed option out of shotgun, and they fumble the snap, and there's a big turnover for our defense, and gets our offense back on the field and puts, our, puts us back in control. And we make some big third down plays here. Here's a third down play to Heath Evans and throws it out in the flat and makes people miss. And, third and six. Uh, I think we were... We were like 80% for third third down conversions the first half. And third and 13 here. Third and 13, uh, Ben throws off his front foot again to Reggie Worthy and just makes the first down, keeps the drive alive. Now first and 10 at the 43 of Northern Illinois. Well, we, we go back and uh, it looks like we're, we're throwing the ball to uh, Robert Johnson, but actually it is to Marcel Willis, makes a big catch. And Marcel's another guy that's starting to make those clutch, clutch catches. And here's old Rudy. Uh, Dancing bear inside. That's what we call him, the dancing bear. He can make people miss at the point of attack as good as anybody I've seen. Same drive, second quarter. Go to the second quarter, and uh, they run a little corner corner blitz there, and we catch them, uh, catch them off guard, and their safety doesn't get over the top soon enough, and uh, uh, Ronnie Daniels makes a big touchdown catch, puts us 14 to nothing. Mm. Here they come again. Here they come, and that's, that's a little play we've been having trouble with. Uh, just a little screen, quick screen pass, and... Big play by Roger Hood. Brings up a third and two. Third and two, and we get to uh, make them start sprinting out and throwing off time. And Tavares Robinson uh, had a little tough time in the fourth quarter, but actually played well the entire game. Here's uh, Jeff, Jeff Klein coming in the game. We were going to put him in the third series and he throws a little swing pass out to Robert Johnson. Third and four. Third and four. And as you can see, Jeff steps up in the pocket, throws a, uh, the pass behind Heath Evans, and Heath makes the first guy miss. And, they were in man coverage, and we get, get we get the first down. Down at their 45 on a first, uh, second and 10 there. Here's our little quick handoff to Tim Carter. He just outruns the coverage. And, and again, Tim is, is, is uh, gives us that special play on the outside with speed. Now at the 18 of Northern Illinois. 18, and Rudy Johnson, uh, again, he hesitates at the line of scrimmage, dances, makes the first guy miss, and makes that extra yards. Offensive line started picking it up here. We started making the blocks. And, he will run a little bootleg pass with uh, Jeff Klein. He throws it to Robert Johnson, and it seems like every other pass he catches is for a touchdown. That's, at this point, they throw him five balls. He's caught four, and three of them have been for touchdowns. That's pretty efficient. Though. That's it's, it's real efficient. There's DeMarco McNeil on one of his big plays. Again, uh, our defensive line continues to get better, and you'll see all of them contribute here this game. There's a, a, a zone play on the outside. Alton Moore forces it go wide. Roger Hood comes up to make the play. Again, our defense played excellent the first half. Uh, here you can say we're all around the football. Big, another big play by DeMarco McNeil. Tackle for a loss. I think we held him to 86 yards the first half, and we had three, almost 300 on offense the first half. So we, we dominated, and we played with a lot of enthusiasm. And there's a big play by Tavares Pounds. Third and eight. Third and eight. We've got the blitz on. Again, we're, we're hitting him high, low. That's Spencer Johnson on the sack. Going the other way now, this is a third and 17. Third and 17, and of course we go to Mr. Mr. Consistent. Uh, Ronnie Daniels makes the catch. He's actually double covered there. Would like to see him throw to somebody else in that situation, but again, he's got a lot of confidence in Ronnie. Third and three. Third and three, we throw the ball outside to Clifton Robinson. Had another good game, consistent. Uh, this drive was going so good that it will end up with uh, Ben throwing his first interception of the year. Yeah, here's a here's a little screen pass we throw to Tim Carter. We've got to make that guy miss, but good blocking downfield. And as you said, we uh, throw in a double coverage here in just a second, and and uh, and they make a big play. But there's another big play to Reggie Worthy, and we make the first down. And actually, we don't show the uh, interception, and now we show uh, Northern Illinois coming off the goal line. Coming off the goal line, knowing we have to have to play good, try to get good field position before half, half to get some points on the board. And here's a big play. Uh, ball's batted up by Namarco McNeil. Uh, big interception. I'd Marcus say White. Marcus White because uh, Marcus got height. He's got height. He can jump. He's a good, was a good basketball player. And, and uh, right before we go in the half, Damon Duvall kicks a 42-yard field goal and tap it off to 24 to nothing. Boy, is it, you couldn't have uh, asked for things to work better in the first half. Well, we played with enthusiasm. And, and again, we played with most of our first teamers. Uh, we didn't uh, wholesale substitute like we do the second half where we're getting a little bit of a trouble. But again, we played a lot of guys in the first half and, and uh, we played with enthusiasm and got the job done. Back in just a minute. Okay, we got right into the second half. You have 24 to nothing lead, pretty good shape. What, what did you want to get done this second half? We wanted to uh, run the clock, get the game over with, and play as many players as we possibly could. And it's uh, it's one of those where uh, you know you're uh, you know you, you really can't do anything right because you, you've got a lead, and, and if they keep playing hard, 
and you got your backup players in the game, you're going to struggle. And, and that's exactly what we did. But again, I'm proud of our team. We played hard. Uh, we made plays when we had to, but we got some valuable experience for a lot of players. Fourth and three coming right here. Fourth and three, and we made some big plays. There's Tavares, Pounds. And our defense played well. We They just hit us on a couple of big plays starting in the fourth quarter. And again, we come out, and we're going to try to run the football. We probably got a little conservative on offense, but we're trying to we're trying to run the clock and, and to get off the field with any major injuries. That drive stalls, and so Northern Illinois going the other way. Our defense continues to get better versus the run. And this was a good game for us on defense because we hadn't seen a running attack like these guys had. And again, they run a lot of play action, and, and I, I thought we played awfully well to see it for the first time. Alton Moore tipped that ball. Alton Moore, and here comes Jeff Klein back into the game, and uh, Cassinius Moore from Aniston, Alabama. Uh, uh, he's going to see a lot of playing time down the stretch. Uh, He's got good ability. He just needs to get, get the experience. Third and two. Third and two. We, again, we made a lot of big third down plays. And there's DeAndre Green. He's, uh, he continues to make big play after big play. And he, he's learning our offense more and more every day. So it's a scoreless third now in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, we, they kind of let the air out of us a little bit. They, they found a play to work. They call holding. Uh, that's, uh, that's one of those plays. It's, uh, it's a judgment call. And get down the goal line. We run a goal line. Defense play it well, but again, we just didn't wrap up and knock him back. I thought that, uh, you know, we, we could hold him there, but we just, just didn't get the job done. They scored. Here's a here's an unusual kick. They kick an onside kick. It only goes two yards, and freshman mistake, Don Terry's Thomas, instead of just getting away from it, it's got to go 10 yards. He tries to pick it up, and uh, we'll learn from that situation. Uh, all of our team, and again, it's good those happen, and you continue to win the game. Here's a play that they started running on us. They, they Number 85, I don't I, I don't know where he came from, but he's a good football player. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna play a lot of football down the road. And they picked on Tavares to, to Robinson, our cornerback on the right side, and we just didn't make the plays when we needed to uh, there in the middle of the fourth quarter. But we come back and, and settle down and make plays. Here's Rudy up the middle. We're, we're starting now to, to feel a little bit of pressure, 24 to 14. Cobb is a quarterback on third and three. Daniel Cobb comes in the game. Uh, you know, Ben was sick. He was in the locker room. Uh, we didn't have our starting quarterback, and I was proud of Daniel coming in, making plays, and throwing completions, moving the ball. And we made a, a terrible mistake with a personal foul penalty, got us in bad shape, and there's a Reggie Torbor on the on the sack. Again, our defense plays hard. And Very we'll, long. We'll play hard like this. We'll we'll make a lot of big plays. Rodney Creighton on a big uh, blitz play on a third and long. Fourth down. They go for fourth down. Uh, they make it there in the game. If they don't, uh, the game's over with. And here we force them out of the pocket and. Got good coverage, and basically the ball game's over. Defense needed that stop. They Coach. really did. They really did. Here I'm, you can tell I'm getting on the offense, tell them we've got to make some plays to keep our defense off the field. Here's a play with Rudy inside. We've got uh, Ben back in the game. Uh, here we come up with a fourth down, uh, third down and short. Rudy makes the first guy miss. They gamble, try to make, try to stop us for the, for the, for the, uh, get the ball back, and Rudy breaks the line of scrimmage and goes and scores. And again, he's a, He's a big fourth quarter player in uh, every game in the fourth quarter. He's he's made us made us a better football team. And that gives him another hundred yard night. Another hundred yard night. And again, our our defense just picks it up and big sack by Spencer Johnson. There's a, there's a young man that's going going to make a big difference in our football program in the next few years. There's pressure by Demarco McNeil uh, making making play. Reggie Torbor should have made that play, but Roger could. Again, here's another guy that's, that's going to have to play well for us down the stretch. Uh, in the defensive backfield for us to be successful. Uh, here they go for broke. They throw it deep, picking on Tavares Robinson one too many times. He picks it off and put that ball down, Tavares. Don't run it out of the end zone. Let's get this game over. And Joe no Novak, the coach at Illinois, Northern Illinois, is a good friend of mine. And You've known him a long time. Known him a long time. I tell you what, they were well coached, played hard. They came in in a, in a humid situation and played hard. And you stop and think about uh, they they could have beaten Northwestern and Northwestern beat seventh ranked Wisconsin yeah, they, yesterday. They're a lot better football team what people give them credit for and again uh, they're a directional team and sometimes people say well they you know they, they don't play but the MAC conference has beat some good teams this year. You're right. We'll be back in just a minute. We'll back in the SEC coach. This will be probably the most important football game that this team has played in two or three years especially at home. Uh, it's a crossroads game. Vanderbilt's a, probably the, the best one in three team in the country. They, they're well coached. They're well, well prepared. Uh, their coaches said they're going to go to a bowl game this year. So I'm sure this is a pivotal game for them. But we have got to prepare this week. And we've got to have the stands full of orange. And people have got to understand, if we can win this game, we'll take a big step towards the conference. And Vanderbilt uh, has always been a good defense. But they can score now, too. They, they have can, offense. They've got a good quarterback. They've got uh, good receivers. 
Uh, they spread the ball out. They, they're, um, like I said, they're one of the, the best coach teams in the conference. And on defense, they're very stingy, and Woody, Woody's uh, known for that. So it'll be a tough game. We're going to need crowd support and everybody there. Okay, if you got a ticket, be there. You can get pay-per-view if you can't, and we'll have the replay for you on Sunday. See you next week. Duval, a native Tennessean from Chattanooga. Justin Fetzko to home. No, it's a fake punt. Snaps it directly to Duval. He's going to throw in the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn! Webb about eight yards deep into the end zone. There's the high snap. He pulls it down. Auburn blocks the kick. It's running and rolling around loose in the end zone. Tigers fall on it. Touchdown, Auburn! That's the best game you've played all year. Give yourself a hand. That's a good game. Total domination on both sides of the line of scrimmage. We got, actually, we got stronger as the game went on. Special teams played outstanding. Good job. Good job, Damon, Damon Duvall, stand up. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody give you much of a chance to be 5-0, guys, but we've, we've made it here. That's half of them. That's almost half of them. Now they get tougher as we go. We'll, we'll find out what we're made of. Now we've got some guys that's beat up a little bit and bruised up. You, you guys that uh, hadn't played much, you're going to have to step it up. But it's going to be fun. This was, a, this was an important game today as we've played that any will play all year long because we proved it. We were a better team, and we improved as the day went on, and we got better. I'm proud of every one of you. It's a good job. Good job, coaches, also. Now, let's enjoy this victory for about 24 hours. You know what we got in front of us. They're not going to get any easier, but we remember that game from last year right here at our house. We remember that. All you guys were here remember what we did. Remember what we did. Ever since two days, everybody been saying our defense is suspect. We didn't have a defensive front. Couldn't make plays. I guarantee having that goose egg tonight, Vanderbilt ain't going to take that, and they're going to spread the word. Defense ball goes to Coach Lovett. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Big shutout for the Tigers, their fifth win of the year, 33-0 over Vanderbilt. But, Coach, when you break that down, it comes out Auburn special teams 21, Vanderbilt nothing. We couldn't have played much better on special teams, Phil. Our, uh, we, we've challenged them for the last four weeks because we haven't played that well, very consistent. And uh, it starts with Damon Duvall, your kicker and your punter and your holders and, and the guys that cover the kicks and the punts and just a super job overall. Defensively, we played a great game. Uh, we made plays. We put pressure on the quarterback. Uh, we didn't give up the big play, which we had done the last couple of weeks. Offensively, uh, a little disappointed. We, we scored some points, but not as consistent as we're going to need to be down the stretch. So we're going to challenge the offense this week. We've, we've got to move the ball a little bit more on the ground and be more consistent on third down and make more plays. Okay, let's go to the Auburn dressing room. I can't say enough about our defense. They've, they've really had their backs against the wall all season. Uh, a lot of people, not a naysayer, said that they couldn't come out here and play ACC football, but you know, they've done it. We're 5-0 right now, and without them, without them playing the way they did and the way they did tonight with a goose egg, we wouldn't be 5-0. Vanderbilt coming in a very tough team, the, very, the first toughest one and three team I ever seen in my life. They came out and played hard, but we just executed real well on offense and defense. Ben did a great job of, of making his reads on time and hitting receivers deep downfield. They put them in the right places to make the right plays. And Officer and I did a great job of protecting, and good things just happened. Yeah, but uh, their blitz gave you a lot of big plays, too. Yeah, it did. It opened a lot of things up. Uh, we, and we practiced it all week, and for the most part, we, we picked it up pretty well. You know, early on, they did have a couple of big plays on us on the blitz, but uh, we came back to the sideline. We got with the coaches, you know. We made all our adjustments and everything, and we did all right. We came back out, and we beat them on it. I didn't, I didn't really think I had my... Once I did my move, I, I fell on the ground. Kind of a shoestring, but it still was effective. Yeah, I, I, when I hit my quick move, I fell on the ground. I didn't know he still had the ball, so I, I grabbed him by the ankle, and he was falling down. And, yeah, I saw him with the ball in his hand, so I ain't know where the quarterback sat. We, we say all week, our special teams house, whoever wins the special teams will win the game. You know, we wanted to come out and do good special teams, and Damon kicked the ball real well tonight. He, he helped us out a lot. 
you know, and he makes he tells the offense to score because they always start in the 20 or below. You know, and um, our special team won for us today. With uh, two seniors on the corners, that, that gives the whole defense a lot of confidence. Yeah, it, it, it gives uh, the defense a lot of confidence, but, you know, I also have confidence in the, uh, the freshmen up front. So, you know, you know, they do their job, and we feel like we'll do our job. The last couple of weeks, Rudy's been, you know, been riding his coattails, and he is a big reason why we're getting better on defense because, uh, you know, he keeps the ball out of their hands, and that keeps us on the sideline. And when those chains are moving, you know, we're, we're good defense. We're on our sideline. We've been close on a couple. Uh, you know, we've had some rough in the punters, and Coach Tuberville, our scheme is we're going to come after you. And uh, the kids believed, and they kept coming, and Reggie did a nice job. I got eight punts for uh, over 50 yards. I got a field goal. I got a touchdown pass. Yeah, you know, I mean, it felt good. You know, it was LSU last year, you know, getting the, the fake field goal. We ran it in, and, you know, it, it felt real good to be able to go in and say, hey, you know, how many kickers can be able to throw and run a pass in? And, you know, I, I felt just like last year. It was the right time in the game. We were in the perfect opportunity, and, you know, the defense did what we wanted them to do, and it left uh, Lorenzo Diamond wide open in the end zone. Team and a beautiful uh, September afternoon, Coach. Uh, kind of mild, nice. And a great crowd. Yeah. It was good to play in the daytime and see everybody tailgating, having a good time here. You can see Tiger Walk. Coach Gene Lorendo and Dick Smaltz were the uh, Tiger Walk celebs. Coach Lorendo was the architect of the, uh, of the Sullivan Beasley years. Wow, the eagle landed, Coach. Tiger landed. What a beautiful sight. I saw him practicing that during the middle of the week. And that, I tell you, that's something to see. And here's a... Our smoke coming out of the tunnel, and and I tell you what, our crowd really got us going. And look at the orange. Look at the orange. What a beautiful sight. And we've still got a few people. I I remind them every once in a while when I see them <laughs> that they get that orange shirt on. Here the game starts, and and uh, uh, they throw a little swing pass out, and it was good to see you. Rashad Walker had one of his better days tackling. We've been on to him a little bit about his technique, and he's getting better at that. And one, they elect to throw on it. The ball. And, uh, I tell you, we took a, took a chance and almost pulled it off, but uh, we had good coverage and uh, turned the ball over to us. Here's the first running play with Rudy, and uh, they were slanting their defensive front most of the night and uh, with good blocking by Ben Nyland, Mike Pacello, Colin Sears on that play. And again, they'd, sometimes they'd make a play, sometimes they wouldn't. There's Rashad Walker again on the tackle, and Jared McGrath. I'm glad that young man's gone. I played against him. He's been in this league longer than I have. <laughs> 20 here. There he is again on the screen pass. Uh, Tavares pounds. Mark White on the tackle. Turns the ball over to us. And we decide to throw the ball since they started having a seven, eight man front. This is Reggie Worthy had another great day. Uh, Jimmy Williams on the tackle, one of their seniors, good football player. Second and nine at the Vanderbilt 40. Here you see the protection is good. Throw the ball out to Clifton Robinson. He makes a big play. And this is where Clifton hurts his ribs in his last play of the game. And, uh, uh, we're we're going to get him back with a big play to get a, move our offense down to the five-yard line. A little disappointed we had to settle for a field goal, but this kind of set up for a touchdown here a little later on the fake field goal. We could tell what kind of uh, rush they were in. And here we come back and, uh, again, running Rudy up the middle on an inside zone play. Makes a great run down the field, making people miss. Marcel Willis, good block. Boy, he had a good game. He really did. Marcel's really, really going to be a... Tremendous player for us. First and 10 at the 38 of Vanderbilt. Here's uh, Heath Evans on a little inside belly play and something we knew that we did. We spread everybody out and went to a one back with Heath in the backfield and ran it. Here's the fake field goal. We got him in what we wanted on the rush and it was a run pass option. Damon pulls the ball down like he's going to run it. They come up and Renzo Diamond's in the end zone for the completion and the touchdown. Larkin Deason on a big block and also Justin Fesco on a big block. He really sold it too. He, he really sold it. Uh, really did. And here's Here's what we're really pleased on. The, the, the coverage on our kickoff team has been excellent. And when you can keep them inside their 15-yard line, you've done a day's work on, on, uh, on your coverage. And here they come out and run a play that we're very concerned about, their option. And we were going to force their quarterback to run the ball. Nobody else had done that. And, and normally that doesn't happen. And here's good pressure from Javar Mills on a pass of uh, uh, Larry Cash on the coverage, overthrown. And here's the block from uh, Reggie Torbor. Uh, I tell you, Eddie Grant's done a super job of these special teams. You can tell how excited they are. <laughs> Recovered there by Cassinius Moore. DeAndre Green in on the pressure also. And again, that when you block a punt, that really demoralizes the other team. It's one of the big plays in the game. You're right. Man. Here's a tip pass by DeMarco McNeil, who continues to get better. I tell you, their quarterback took a pretty good pounding in this game. We put pressure on him all night. We get the ball back here. And 
Here's uh, Rudy up the middle for some of his 128 yards during the game. Gets a first down. <coughs> At the 32 now, first and 15. 32, uh, good crossing route uh, throw by Ben to Robert Johnson. And again, Robert, we need to get Robert more involved in our passing game. He's been getting one here or there, but he, he's too big a target. Here's a good uh, rollout pass, uh, bootleg pass. Another throw to Robert Johnson. Tuck that ball in, though. We need to protect it when we catch it. But Third and goal at the seven. The linebacker's coming. Linebacker's coming, and DeAndre Green makes the catch. Ben just barely gets it off. Antoine Bradford uh, came in and put a pretty, pretty good lick on Ben. You can tell there Antoine got the worst of that one, though. Ben's a pretty big big boy back there playing quarterback. Here's a big play by Courtney Rose on their little power play that they put in just for us. We'd had a tough time with this play in several games. Third and two. Prior to this. Third and two. Uh, another play by Roderick Chambers for uh, Mark Brown and and uh, Javar Mills comes in for the big play. As last week, another near perfect uh, first half. Played well. Defense played well. Offense played well. But again, we put pressure on on the special teams. And when you can play that well on special teams in, in the first half, it really makes everything else come together. And we'll be back in just a minute. Coach, uh, we'll know tomorrow, Monday, uh, whether or not the game will be on CBS or what was Jefferson Pilot? Jefferson again. Pilot, yeah. It's, it'll be a TV game, but uh, we're excited it's going to be during the day. When you play on the road, you'd rather play early as possible because, number one, it takes the fans out of it a little bit on the road, uh, and uh, then it gives you an opportunity to get back, get rested, and get ready for the next week. Yeah. So any preference on CBS or, well, sure, you'd like to be on national television. On well, CBS. national television, but we'll get there. We keep winning. Uh, uh, things will fall into place. Okay, let's get back into the uh, second half of play now. You've been concerned about uh, uh, a little lull here in the second half. Well, last week we were we were had 24 to nothing at halftime. We came out flat and, and and let Northern Illinois back in the game, and and that was my my main point going into this third quarter. We play hard. Uh, we're still going to play a lot of players, get as many people on the field with it, uh, get as much experience as we possibly could. But we weren't going to let up, and we didn't do that. Offensively, we didn't come out uh, like we would have wanted. Uh, Vanderbilt came out to play defense the second half and played better. Here we made a mistake on the kicking game. They get a face mask right there, and they should have been a 15-yard penalty. They only caught five, almost tore his head off. But uh, that was a big break for us because if, if uh, we don't get that face mask penalty, they get it at the five-yard line and makes it possibly 24 to seven. But uh, here's a great punt. Damon just turns around and kicks a like 59-yard punt mm -hmm. on the next play and gets a field position. We had field position the rest of the half. But again, the coverage teams have have really improved. Uh, Michael Lindsay there, our deep snapper, made that that tackle, and uh, good to see him do that. There's a great tackle by Larry Casher. Uh, they came out to play the second half. They, they I think they were, thought they were a little embarrassed the first half. And again, they got a good football team. Lee Woodenhopper's done a good job. There's Ray Perkins, the little running back from Dillard High School, who was a guy that we looked at this past year. He's got a lot of speed, and he'll give them an opportunity to get a be better in the running game. Uh, here's Whit Smith putting oh, pressure. Oh, lateral, on. I guess. Yeah, it was a lateral. He had to pick it up and just a uh, group of uh, Auburn Tigers around the tackle. And Second good, and 12. Good to see Swarm tackle. Second and 12, and again, putting pressure. There's Marcus White on, I think, his first sack as, a, as an Auburn Tiger, and it's good to see that. Again, our young players are getting better because of the experience. Uh, here we're coming back, give the ball off to Rudy on the inside zone. Good blocking downfield with the offensive line. Uh, we've decided now that we're going to run the ball more to take pressure off the passing game, and Again, we just two or three plays here. We move it down the field pretty good. Here's a 21-yard run by Rudy. Uh, I think it gets him over the 100-yard mark for the fifth straight time, and it's great to hear those cries from the stands, Rudy. Marcel Willis, who, who caught a lot of punts in this game. And watch, then, this, watch this right. catch. Just a kind of an a acrobatic catch and a good move to make somebody miss. Marcel's going to be a big-time football player here as, as the season goes and his career goes. It's great to see young guys have success. Caught those punts just like he'd been doing it all year. That's right. He caught six or seven punts and did a good job. Here's a little trap play that ran inside Whit Smith and Forrest Pounds and, and uh, Stanford Simmons on the tackle. Again, they, they got some yards rushing on, on the ground the second half. Uh, here's a big big sack by Whit Smith, a guy coming back from shoulder surgery, and most people wouldn't even come back and play, but, uh, uh, boy, he's, 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 it's great to see him play well. And, Here's the snap over the head for the safety. And again, just pressure put on by our special teams. That's caused by that block punt earlier. And then in a kickoff uh, after a safety, Tim Carter takes it back about 15, 20 yards. Another exciting player we've got on the team. We, 
We didn't get the ball to him as much as we would like yesterday, but again, he'll, his, his, he'll have more days in the sun. Here's Ronnie Daniels. Again, Ronnie's struggling because they're, they're not going to let old Ronnie have the ball like, uh, like he did last year, but uh, again, he's going to start showing up in these big games coming up. Defensively, we stepped it back up, and, and uh, they put a new quarterback in the game. As you can tell, he's a young guy that makes some mistakes. And Came from uh, Florida to Vanderbilt. Transfer from Florida. Uh, we get the ball back offensively, and uh, good protection on the left side over there. Uh, uh, we've got uh, Jeff Klein in the game, and uh, we, you know, the, that's one point that we've got to start stressing in practice is somebody's got to step up and be our backup quarterback. I'm really not pleased with how we're playing there and we've got too much talent not to get the job done. <clears throat> Here's a big play from Larry Casher. They run a little slant right on a blitz. And Larry makes those plays when he has to. Fourth and four. They're going for it, of course. Fourth and four. They run a delay to a tight end uh, and uh, we, we, we make a play there by Alton Moore and hold him, hold him for the fourth down try and then get the ball back and Protect that, uh, that goose egg. Here's a, here's a big play to Lorenzo Diamond. I tell you, Lorenzo's become more and more of a threat with the ball underneath his arm. It's good to have two tight ends, and including Reed Tankersley is getting better. He, he got some playing time in this game. And as much great, as you're running two three. tight ends, you need them. Yeah, we, we need them, and there's a, there's a big catch by Reggie Worthy. You know, we work on that, you know, lay him on his back and, <laughs> and throw the ball and have it tipped. That's, that's uh, a big play. And there's Woody Woodenhofer. I tell you, he's done a super job at Vanny. They didn't play a great game but uh, he'll win some games and they continue to recruit the talent that they've got they've got young talent they're, they're going to be a force in this conference. They play a pro style defense that uh, that's pretty tough to handle at times. We, we're a much better offense than what we played and uh, the, they took the ball out of our hands several times and luckily that we played good on defense and and special teams if not that ball game been a lot closer but they'll win some games. And we'll be back with a final word in just a minute. Coach, after Saturday, this uh, this conference has is, is gone crazy, but Auburn can really make a statement in these next two weeks. Well, we've, we've taken care of business. Uh, we're the only team in the conference without a loss, and we have three wins, uh, but we're getting ready to play the real schedule. We have a two-game road stretch that's about as tough as uh, anybody will have, and the uh, next two weeks will tell the tale on us. Mississippi State uh, mashed the Florida defense running the football. It's amazing. Uh, Florida had one of the better defenses that we played against last year, and they've got most of them back. But again, that goes to show you, you know, what a year can do. Uh, Mississippi State's much, much improved, and uh, they play great defense, and great special teams. And they're probably the, the, the team to beat now in this conference because of the way that they're playing and, and the way their schedule uh, rounds out uh, going through the end of the year. I don't think anybody knows as much about them as you do, do you? Well, I've played them a lot of times. I've been over Starkville several times. so. It'll be a fun game. We're looking forward to going back on the road and having a lot of orange in the stands come next Saturday. We'll see you next week on the Auburn Football Review. Thank you for watching. This is Takes a deep snap in the shotgun. Rolls to his right on the bootleg. Fires up field. Pass is intercepted at 25. And down at the 21-yard line is Rashad Walker. Single setback Johnson. Leard pitches it to Rudy Johnson. Cuts it up field. 25-30, 35-40. Could be gone. 45. Cuts it back. Across midfield. 40. Dodging tackles. Cuts it back again at the 30. Still on his feet to the 25, the 20. Down that far sideline. 10, 5. Gone. Touchdown, Auburn! I'm proud. Of de defensively, I'm proud of you. I'm going to tell you what. They're a good football team. Let me tell you something. When they line up in no backs almost every down, they sling it around the field. That number 11 had a heck of a day. They got good receivers. Don't think they're not a pretty good football team. They've gotten better. I'm proud of the way you hung in there. You didn't give me anything big. You tackled better as the game went on. You got stronger. Offensively, you did what you had to do. You took it and jammed it down their throat, and you put it away. Special teams was excellent. So overall, it was a good football game. I'm proud of the seniors. We didn't put a lot of emphasis on this game for several reasons. You can't get up for every game. It was a home game. It's one we knew we could come back in. If we played hard, we could get it. Now it all changes. It all changes. There's going to be a lot of emphasis coming up this week. We've got six. We've got a winning season. We're bowl eligible. We're not going to stop here. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got one week before we put in a, a, a week in an open date. I know we've got some guys hurt. I know we've got some guys bruised up a little bit. But the thing we've got to do is get healthy. In seven days from right now, we want to be right back in here doing the same thing. It's not too hard to figure out who's got, who this ball is going to go to. First time we've been on this long time. We've had a thousand yard rush around here, and Rudy Johnson did it today. I want to 
just say thank y'all, man. No matter if you play offense, defense, special teams, or whatever, all y'all took me, helped me out to do this. So I want to say thank y'all to all y'all. This is the Auburn... Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers go bowl eligible with a 38-28 win over Louisiana Tech on a great homecoming day. Congratulations, Coach. And it must be like a root canal to have to play a team like that. <laughs> That's a tough game, a non-conference game between all these conference games that we're playing. Coming off two losses, uh, we didn't put a lot of emphasis on this game for several reasons. You can't get up for every game, and uh, we thought we could pull this game out at home. We gave up some yards, but the, the key stat defensively, we held them to 36 yards rushing. And, and if you can do that, you're going to be pretty successful. We made them turn the ball over three times defensively. Then when we got the ball on offense, most of the time, we took advantage of it. We ran the ball successfully, and uh, we dominated most of the game on, on the offensive side of the ball. Keeping your composure was vital in that game after, because they got a lead then. Well, they got hit 14-7, to 7, and sometimes you panic. You say on offense, hey, we got to throw the ball too. But we knew we could run the ball, so uh, we stuck with our game plan. Uh, our punter, Damon Duvall, did a great job. We only had five penalties, the in, penalties at the entire game, and it was, it was a good game overall. And I know a lot of people say we gave up over 400 yards passing, but, again, they're a good passing team. They, yeah. con they converted a lot of third and longs, and uh, I was proud of our tackling. When they caught the ball, we tackled them. They didn't get a lot of yards after the catch, so uh, that was a very, very big plus for us. And it was a great day for Rudy Johnson, who went over the 1,000-yard mark, and uh, let's go to the dressing room and hear some more about that. He, he's a special player, uh, and we're blessed to have him here. And he's just special in the fact that, that he can do what he does, but at the same time, he appreciates what everybody else does for him. And I think you can see that by the speech he made after the game. And, and you know, we're, we're just very blessed to have Rudy Johnson on our football team. I don't know what the film's going to show, but it, it may show that y'all knocked down about seven or eight guys on Rudy's long run, and you had one of the good ones. Yeah, I got downfield, and uh, backside linebacker didn't come up to make the play like I thought he would. But uh, bottom line, Rudy made about ten people miss himself, so you got to give all credit to him on that. We probably just we took care of the initial line, and uh, once you get him in the open field, he's tough to bring down, and uh, he proved it on that run. Blind did a great job of finding off the ball and getting me somewhere, somewhere to run, but when I got further down the field, the receivers were right there making big blocks down the field, and it just helped me out. That third down play may have been, uh, you look back, it may have been the biggest play of the game because uh, you only got a small lead. You got to have that to keep the drive going. Well, I kind of knew it was going to work out because the field, we kind of kind of gave him a lot of respect. He played me back, gave him like 10 to 12 yards. When I broke off the route, I knew it was going to be too long before he got close up to me, so that what made me jump. He was kind of in the zone defense that we had been working all week, and um, I just got in my zone, part of the zone, and I was supposed to get the ball lifted, but I guess I was kind of so back far in my zone that I could just reach my hands up and intercept. Uh, with that offense they got, it's just line up and throw the ball everywhere. So we did. We came out and played hard. I believe we did very well. You were in the right place at the right time on the interception? Yeah, I, I just seen the ball get tipped, so I just went for it. <laughs> Boy, the big hit you had seemed to lift the defense at a time when they needed lifting. Yeah, any time you get a big play on defense, it, you can use it as motivation and just go from there, you know. Good for bad. Way to go. Way to go, man. Way to go. Good. Beautiful fall Saturday it was at Jordan Hare. Good crowd, not not a, a total sellout, but uh, that that just happens on this this type of game, coach. Well, it's homecoming, and uh, all the true Auburn people were there. We had a great Tiger walk, as you can tell. The cheerleaders here, you know, they do a super job. They don't get a lot of a lot of publicity, but cheerleaders and band and Albie, you know, we're proud to have them as as a big as part Jackie of our football Burkett team. Jackie Burkett and yeah. Zeke Smith, uh, the uh, celebrities uh, in the Tiger Walk, those were stars of the '57 championship. Team. Last national championship team, and here's the. Uh, Oh, this is Here's, great. Uh, this is unbelievable. We don't get to see this, but... Uh, I, I think you should bring the players out and watch this. Well, I'd say one of these days on Thursday, they, they practice on Thursdays, okay. and I'm going to take the team down there and watch them do it on Thursdays. You can tell we got a great crowd, and what a beautiful day to play a football game. When that eagle lands, that crowd goes crazy. They do, and here, here you can tell we're coming out and running the football, and, and just to start out, our game plan was, was to play conservative on defense, don't give them the big play, and run the ball offensively, and and the game plan worked pretty good. It, uh, we made some plays, we gave up some yards on defense, but again, it was a good game plan and, and uh, we got the win. But here you can tell we're kind of mixing it up and uh, they put eight in the box, so we decided to throw the bootleg pass here to Heath Evans and 
Good throw, good catch. He had, had some good positive yardage. Yeah, it? made some plays, ran the ball well. Uh, but I was just proud of our offensive line. Here you can just tell we're owning the line of scrimmage, and uh, Rudy's getting more comfortable running the inside zone play. That was inside zone, and uh, we're getting more physical. At the nine-yard line. Here's a running play to Heath. I think they were keying on Rudy, and uh, Heath just carries it in from the nine-yard line. Uh, uh, big play, opening drive. We take the ball down and, and score. They come right back with their very own eight-play drive and stick it in the end zone. Well, again, you can tell we didn't get a lot of pressure on the passer with a four-man rush, and they have some big receivers. That young man right there caught uh, 15 passes in the game. And, uh, I hadn't seen that very often, but, again, this quarterback's going to be a good football player. He's uh, only his, his third start. He's a true freshman. Big play by Don Terry's Thomas. Comes from a family of quarterbacks. Yeah, Jack Bicknell, the head coach, will he will do a, a super job at Louisiana Tech. And, you know, they just get some defensive players. That was a fourth and seven, so they kept the drive going, and then they score on this little screen here. Little screen pass. We've had trouble with this play this year, and, uh, again, they just got the angles on us, and that's we run the same play, and we've, we've done the same thing to some people. But, but again, what are you saying now to your, your, your folks? Well, you know? the thing, you know, we're talking with the, with our offense here is be patient. Uh, you know, don't, don't leave your game plan here. They got us in third and long, and Ronnie Daniels makes a big play, but... Stay with your running game. Keep their offense off the field. That's the best way to beat a team like this. Don't don't let them stay on the field. But they get the ball back. And uh, here comes here. three great defensive plays, though. Here's a big hit by Tavares Pounds. Causes a you know the, the supposed supposedly fumble, but actually it was an incomplete pass. Uh, we want to try to get the young man out of the pocket. There's a big play by Demarco McNeil. He played again one of his better games. He's getting better and better. Uh, here comes the interception. Interception. Uh, they throw it over the middle and playing zone protection. Uh, get the deflection. Shad Gilliard makes the interception. And again, that's what you want to do. You want to give them some yards, make them throw in the zone coverage, and get that big play. Come back with Rudy here. We can tell we're just dominating the line of scrimmage. Uh, Rudy gets six. It's a second and fourth, a 12 yard line there. Dominate the line of scrimmage, control the ball. Rudy, again, just makes that second effort and gets the four or five extra yards. And uh, there's Lorenzo Diamond on a good block. They stack it up inside here, and Rudy just trots. I think yeah. that's a big key, talking about Lorenzo and, and Reed Tankersley and Robert Johnson. Our tight ends are getting better and better at blocking, and that's one thing that we started the season to get better at. Here they coming back, and we put pressure. This is one of the few blitzes that we had, and Marco McNeil gets a sack. And again, everybody says, well, why didn't you blitz more? The reason you don't blitz a team like this is because you can give them a chance for a big play, and uh, the odds are that... Uh, the more you blitz, the more chances they have and of getting that big play. And here we cause them to shank a, a punt. We get great field position, and uh, I thought Eddie Grant and special teams did a good job. Here's a reverse to Tim Carter. Caught him off guard. Here you can see his, uh, the spurt through the line of scrimmage, and Tim's got that, that extra gear when he gets to the sideline. First and goal now at the nine. Again, we keep pounding Rudy inside. They, they're a little undersized on the defensive line, and that's... That's caused them to lose some ball games this year. Here, again, the same play we ran the play before. Untouched going into the end zone. Make it 21-14. Well, they turn a 14-7 deficit into a 21-14 lead to midway of the third. And High second, to, excuse me. We have to come back out, and, you know, they're not going to give up. Uh, they throw that quick screen that they scored on the play before, but here we've played a lot better. Uh, you've got to get more than one guy in on the tackle on that quick screen. They throw down, down the field. We should have had the interception. Rob Pate almost had it, almost tapped it to the guy where he caught the ball. But, you know, Rob's playing better. You know, he struggled the first four or five games, but he's playing better. Here's a quick screen inside to the number eight. To, uh, you know, again, your defensive linemen like Javar Mills have to make those plays on the, on the screen pass. And here was a big play in the ball game. A fumble snap from center. They had a drive going, and uh, Alex Lincoln recovers. And we come back, and... We're going to move the ball down the field. Here's a good move by Heath Evans. Heath is uh, becoming a better pass receiver, not just a running, running back. And uh, we're making some plays. Uh, we're running uh, our boots. We're running our inside running game. Here's a big uh, throw and catch to DeAndre Green. DeAndre's who has a load once he catches it, too. A big load. And here, here's a play that uh, you know concerns you a little bit. They're in zone, zone coverage. We throw in the zone, and uh, their linebacker makes a good interception. Only the third one being thrown all year long. So, so you got to hold them to have a lead at the half. Here's a screen pass, a big play by Roderick Hood on the screen, and we're playing man coverage there. And you have to play some man against these guys to, to, to man up on the screen passes underneath. Here's a sack by Reggie Torbor. Reggie continues to get better. He's a little undersized, uh, but he's still a good pass rusher, and we go in 21-14 to 14 at halftime. 
And we'll come back in just a minute, right after this. Congratulations to Bridget Carraway, a biomedical science major from Moulton, Alabama, who was crowned Miss Homecoming Queen for 2000 during the halftime festivities. And following the game, I understand there was a reunion of the Tigerettes and the, the Tiger Host, the organization that assists uh, your staff in recruiting. A great group of guys and girls that do a super job. Sue Lockler has been in charge of that group for a long time, and uh, they had a reunion, and I went to it last night and had a great time. Uh, it was a busy weekend. Of course, on Friday, the Auburn football letterman held their annual golf tournament uh, in Auburn, and uh, there were some big names at the tournament. This is a really great event now. I mean, Bo Jackson was there. We had to, a lot of the letterman. It was a super time, and the money was raised for Corey Lewis, uh, uh, a former player who who has uh, got medical problems, and uh, it's going to go for a great cause. Okay. Now the j and Bookstore Tiger of the game. Well, you know, you just got to look at, at what we did in the game. We, we played good almost in every position. Of course, everybody says defensively we, we, we didn't get the job done. We gave them 28 points. But it all goes back to one thing. If you can run the football, you can win football games. Our offensive line is a player of the game because Rudy Johnson rushed for 249, and the reason because we got good blocking. Blowing them off the line. Congratulations to the Auburn offensive line. The J&M Tiger of the game. Change anything at the half, Coach? No, we didn't, Phil. I tell you, we felt good about what we were doing. Defensively, we knew we had to go out and make some more plays. We had to tackle better, but uh, uh, we wanted to get the ball back for our offense as much as possible. We knew we could score some points and uh, uh, just keep on keeping on it. This is an interesting third quarter. It gets off to a good start right here. A lot of action. You know, we're playing zone defense again, and here's what you want to do. You want to make them turn the ball over and get more possessions for your, your offense, and Rashad Walker makes a good interception. We take the ball and make some plays. Uh, we we were wanted to come in the second half and run more outside running plays. We felt like we they were going to start clogging up the inside. We bogged down here. We don't get the touchdown, but Damon Duvall kicks the field goal. It gives us a 10-point lead and an uh, opportunity now to, to make some more plays on defense. And here's a quick screen. Uh, we adjusted it real well. Guys are making plays. You know, it's just exciting to watch these guys have fun. And again, I know we gave up some yards, but... Uh, these guys are playing hard, and we're, and we're making progress. Here's a, here's another throw and catch, but again, Ryder Cood makes the one-handed tackle, gets the guy on the ground, no yards after uh, after the catch. But these guys are great at throwing the football and finding the open man, and they move down the field. And you know, there's there's a play we almost intercepted the ball. They get a play, but they run a good bootleg pass and a good throw, good catch. I tell you, this young freshman is going to give a lot of people headaches. There's not going to be a lot of people wanting to play them. Uh, in the next few years. That's a three-point game. Auburn must score here, and they do, and this is the play that uh, Rudy Johnson goes over a 1,000 yards for the season. Well, what a, what a big day for Rudy. Again, uh, we're proud of him. We're proud of the whole team because that's a team effort when you have a running back to get to attain 1,000 yards, especially in just eight games. And again, there's a good throw and catch from Marcel Willis. We're spreading the ball around a little bit to the outside receivers. Uh, they're trying to play more run now. There's a good block by Kendall Simmons, uh, Tim Castro. You know, our offensive line is getting better. Tim Castro started his first game. We didn't play Colin Sears, as we did several starters. We huge, held him out this game. Huge play here. Uh, probably the biggest play in the second half, uh, other than Rudy's run. Here's a third, I think, nine, and we throw mm -hmm. a 21-yard play uh, pass and uh, catch to uh, DeAndre Green, and it kept us kept our drive alive. And as you can see, we drive down and go untouched almost in the end zone for uh, another touchdown to Rudy. That puts it up 10, 31-21, little breathing room, but you still have to stop them lots of times. Well, you got to stop them, and again, they're, they're explosive, and we want to make them uh, earn whatever they get. And here's a little throw over the middle, again, playing zone defense. Tavares Pounds making the big lick, and you throw enough of those and get hit, hit uh, uh, like, like that, you're going to be looking out the side of your, your helmet to uh, somebody to hit you, and again, there's one of their few running plays, and uh, we held them to less than 40 yards rushing. Here's a little fake, and kind of a uh, a bootleg pass, almost another interception. So third and four, getting more pressure on the quarterback as the game goes, and we're making plays. And here's a here's the, the long run to Rudy. And I tell you, this kind of breaks the game open. Uh, you can tell him he doesn't have the speed uh, that people uh, say that, that you need to be a, a great running back. But a great running back doesn't have to have speed. He has to make people miss, and that's mm -hmm. what Rudy does. He has this fluid motion about him, too. He's always moving forward and, and always moving and, and one person doesn't bring him down. I yeah. think that's a big key to being a great running back. And here they go again. You know, we've got guys all around him, and this young quarterback is throwing and making plays. Here's that screen pass that made great adjustments. Reggie Torbor, 
Spencer Johnson did not play the first half. Comes in and plays good because of a, a bruised arm, and we wanted to hold him out, but we felt like we were getting a little tired rushing the passer, so we brought him in the second half. Here you can tell he's putting pressure on the quarterback. That was a, if I'm not mistaken, I think a fourth and, yeah, one. and fourth one. Again, they take a chance and make the play. And just make a great play. You got to give them credit. Here's a quick slant, and, and uh, we just overrun it with their safety, and uh, they pull back within 10 points, 38 to 28. Uh, this uh, this team is this their, their team is is uh, is built totally around their offense. Well, it's built around their offense and their quarterback. Again, they had they've got a lot of senior wide receivers. This young guy's got an opportunity to throw to experienced receivers. Uh, offensive line does a good job of protecting. Here he steps up in the pocket and overthrows, and and uh, we make the play and. And we get the ball back, and now we just start running the ball down the field to run the clock. And Could have scored here, but you chose not yeah. to. Cassinius Moore, again, our second team tailback, coming in, making some plays. There's Brandon Johnson from Bayou La Battery, making a, a big run here. He's going to be a good football player for the Tigers. And Shrimp Fred boater, huh? Shrimp boater, yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Monrico Crittington in the game. Hart McGarry. Let the clock run Cole out. Cole Kublik. Uh, and we let the clock run out. And again, uh, Louisiana Tech and Jack McNeil, they're gonna, he's going to do a super job there. Uh, that's a, that's a school that uh, it thrives on throwing the ball. They get good receivers, good quarterbacks because of their tradition. And uh, again, they're going to make people pay down the road. Comes from a coaching family. Back with a final word in just a minute. Okay, everybody, here's the game plan. It's all about. And it's going to be a fan game. We need orange in the stands. Everybody at Tiger Walk. This is a must game for the coaches and the fans to get these players going after nine straight. And we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. an Auburn Network production. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers hold on for a big win over the University of Arkansas before a great crowd good in here. Coach, <laughs> the Razorbacks were a load for a tired football team. Well, they, they came in and uh, had, they had an open date before us. We knew we were going to get four quarters of tough football, and they played hard. Uh, they came up, they came in with a lot of injuries, uh, but so did we. And uh, we've played nine straight weeks, and I'm just proud of our football team for playing with the intensity that they played with you know, for the last eight quarters, Louisiana Tech and, and this team, it was a marvelous effort on everybody's part. It was senior day. Our seniors had their parents out on the field before the game, and uh, what a great group of guys. But I'm just proud of, of the, the entire team and the fans of how we won that game yesterday. The Orange fans, uh, they, they were back. They were back and very loud, and it was a great atmosphere. And, you know, when you play at home in conference, you need that atmosphere, and it was a wonderful day. I pre that's probably what won the game in the fourth quarter, kept the, the defense going. Well, we were down and out at times, and when we fumbled at the end, and they have the ball at like the 30-yard line to go into the winning score, our fans got loud, and their quarterback throws an interception, and a great play by our defense, but also uh, helped out very much by our fans. Okay, let's go in the dressing room now and talk to some of those Auburn Tiger defenders. Coach told him we need to go out and make some plays because, you know, Alton was struggling at the time. We need to go out and make some plays for him. Well, you know, it's kind of a payoff for you guys who are out there by yourself in a lot of plays. And to, to, to get some back every once in a while really helps. Yeah, it makes you feel a whole lot better. You know, they kept the two balls on you. They kept the ball on them. Make it, make it worth playing. It's a big one for the team and, of course, for myself. You know, I've been going through some injuries and stuff. And now I finally got back you know, doing better for myself, so it was big for me. We've been disappointed in the last couple of showings out there. We felt like the losses have been on our shoulders a little bit. We wanted to come out and play four quarters today, and I knew every time we, if we had a turnover, if we had penalties, we had to go back there and stop, put out a fire. I knew our defense was going to rise in the cage. You could see it in the guys' eyes. They weren't going to stop. The offense turned the ball over sometimes, but you know what I'm saying? We can't hold on to them, but we went out there and we got to make plays, and we made plays. And they make plays, sometimes we don't make plays, and they'll be able to give us a team message. And uh, they were, uh, you know, Pally and, and uh, Boo Williams, those guys are pretty good players. They're, all, they're awesome players. You know, I think what helps Arkansas, they got, they're real tough, you know, real physical football team. But I really applaud our effort today because we, we really dug in the tank, you know, and everybody played together. It's not about one man, it's about the team effort, and that's what I'm proud of today. If anybody ever left it all out there, you guys left it out there today. All day, all day long. That's why being all the time is all about. That's right, baby. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We knew it would come a time where sometimes the offense get caught up like that, but you got to believe 
that the offense has been doing a great job so far this season. I mean, they did a good job today, too. It's just that, you know, defense just had to come in and step up. This was the time that they were calling on us. We knew someday we had to come in and stepped up, and we could be stepped up. Y'all not going to kid them a little bit? No, man. They didn't kid us when we gave up all no points. So, I mean, we're a team, man. We don't, you know, they, they, they won. They put the points on the board to win the game, and we just helped them. Okay, we get into the game. One of those beautiful uh, fall afternoons. Coach Jordan, Tom Bryan's helped you a lot, Coach. He really has, and uh, he's really helped us with the Letterman. He's, he uh, works with the Letterman quite a bit. And here's our seniors uh, being introduced before the game with their parents. And again, what a great group of guys. They've oh, gone man. through a lot at Auburn and oh, had some good times, but, but some tough times. And we're, we're uh, glad they're part of this program and really glad they're, they're part of this Auburn family. Must be a bittersweet time for these guys, all the the memories they take with them and yeah uh, but more good than bad I mean, they're in it finishing up on a great note and yeah we're going to have an opportunity to go to a bowl game that was one of their big goals to to accomplish and here we're coming out on the field and the crowd gets us into it and understand uh the eagle flew around the field the eagle war eagle six did another great job you just got to come see this uh, this folks i mean this is an amazing thing one of the best college atmospheres in the country mm -hmm. opening kickoff and and uh, they elect to receive. I was a little bit uh, surprised by that, where their offense kind of banged up. But uh, we, we run a different type of defense on them on the first drive, and they weren't prepared for it. And John Lovett and our coaches did a super job defensively of not getting them off balance and good game tackling there. Whit Smith on the tackle. Okay, Auburn's first possession, first play. First play, and they force us to throw the ball, and uh, we raise up and throw a curl right to Tim Carter. And our game plan was the first quarter throw the ball more than run it. Uh, we knew that they'd have six or seven, eight, nine people in the box to stop Rudy, and we come out moving the ball in the air, and Lorenzo Diamond making a good catch there. That was a third and three. Here's a second and eight at the 31. They have an excellent defense. They've got a lot of guys that make plays, and uh, here's a ball that Ben shouldn't have thrown, and throws it up for grabs. They catch it and uh, turn it around and put our defense back out on the field. All right, they make a couple first downs. They're out at midfield on a second and ten. Midfield, here's Fred Talley on one of his plays, and uh, draw play, and we... Gang tackling, Boy. Uh, DeMarco McNeil. It's just it's great to see these young guys making plays. Third and 15. I think the uh, up, upscale practice you all did, too. Was well, there. we got back into practice, and there's Rodney Creighton on one of his big licks. And it really gets you going on the sideline when something like that happens. And here they punt, and we make one of the major mistakes. Clifton Robinson, you're not ever supposed to back up inside the 10 to catch a ball, and he does that. And field position we knew was going to be very, very important. And that really put us in a tough situation. So playing conservative on the goal line, you go three and out, and here they come again at the 41 of Auburn. Again, running tally inside, and we played the run fairly well at times, but we did give up a couple of big plays, which is very concerning. But uh, again, they, these guys are learning. We, we played this new defense early, and here's a play that we made on third down and five, and they throw it, and Larry Casher makes a play. Third and 10. Here's a, here's a fourth down play, and throws it out of bounds. It, and no, uh, that was third and 10, okay. and then they missed the field goal. Okay, then they missed the field goal. Right. Excuse me, and we get them off the field and get our offense the ball back. All right, we're in the second quarter now. Second quarter, and uh, we come out throwing again. That was a third and three. Uh, Tim Carter makes the first down. Going for it here on fourth and one. Fourth and one, uh, we give it to the big boy, Heath Evans, and we barely made it, but uh, <laughs> barely's like a mile. Fourth and two, big play. Fourth and two, we're throwing the out route. Ben has to go to the secondary receiver, throws, throws it to Tim Carter. He makes somebody miss. And there's a great move. Number 38 just, hey, you know, he made him look bad there and going to the end zone for the touchdown. And, uh, again, you got to tackle better than what they tackle. They didn't tackle very well in open field, and I thought that was a difference in us scoring some points. But the celebration didn't last very long. Didn't last long. Uh, turn around, and we don't tackle very well. There's two or three missed tackles, and I tell you, this Fred Tiley can run. He's got great speed. He's not very big, uh, but he's an excellent running back, and, uh, their coach said after the game, this was the first time he'd really been healthy enough to play a complete game. He broke his hand early in the season and had an open date and really got his legs back up underneath him. And All here he comes back and, uh, three and out. Don, and Don Terry Thomas makes a big play. Brings up a second and 10 now at the 30 yard line. Second and 10, uh, run the draw play. And again, we weren't going to have any of that draw play anymore. We, they scored on it and uh, we zeroed in on it pretty, pretty good. Third and long. Third and long, they throw it down the field. Roger could on a on a big play. They had some big receivers, uh, 27 and 23. Fourth, six and down four. Down side the six pass. five. Here's a fake punt, and we made a terrible mistake here. Knocked the ball down, but Larry just instinct says intercept the ball, and and uh, 
we catch it and get the ball to the five yard line. But this is great poise by an offensive football team. We get the ball to the five yard line. We come out, we throw a ball to Tim Carter, and we just work it down the field, make some critical third down plays. Here's a third and six coming right here. And uh, you know, just you have to convert. You know, in big games like this, and Reggie Worthy on the on the completion, and we took what they gave us, and then that's what you have to do when you're a good football team. You just take what they give you. And First down. Here's a run by Rudy on the outside. Here's a play I just discussed. They hit him out of bounds, and they stand over top of him. That, there's really no call for that, and uh, that, that, but that happens in a lot of college football games. We're trying to trying to uh, eliminate that. And here's a throw and a catch to. Uh, and Jerry's McIntyre. But here comes a Rudy Revenge, Coach. Rudy Revenge, yeah. I'm, I, he's probably looking for 38 <laughs> right here. Uh, 38 doesn't show up. Uh, he just breaks tackles. And again, you've got to wrap up on a big running back. They didn't do a very good job Watch of that. This. Now, this is some kind of running through. Good football. block by Heath Evans. Uh, one missed tackle, two Boom. missed tackle, three missed Boom. tackles, four, five, six missed tackles on one, one running play. And again, they're good on defense, but you. It's like us telling our guys, you have to tackle the running back. What would you say to him there? <laughs> well, I went over and I didn't say a whole lot. Rudy was, Rudy was kind of exhausted. But, you know, they come back, and I tell you what, they, they have a football team that's got a lot of pride, and they come back right before half and scored and, Boy, and tied it up. Every time uh, you made a long drive, they made a short one. <laughs> well, they've got a good team. Houston Nuts done a good job of coaching his team. And one thing I told our fans and our, our players, this team would play us for four quarters. Not for a half, but for four quarters. And, well, and we got exactly that. Back in. We get into the second half now, Coach, the big receivers, they were giving you guys some problems. Yeah, I'm proud of our, our defensive coaches, Phil. They, we went to more of a roll coverage. We double covered the outside receivers, but we had to play the run a lot better uh, the second half because we knew that doing that, they would run the ball more. And again, here you can tell we put more pressure on the quarterback, and, and I think John Lovett and his coaches did a super job of adjusting the second half. Here's a, here you can tell that they know what we're doing. We take a guy out of the box. We got less people playing the run, so they're, they're going to throw it. Here's a little screen pass, and uh, uh, they fumble the ball up, but they say he was down, and, and they get the ball back. But they have to punt because uh, they held him just a yard short of the first down marker. But backed up again. Here we're coming out of the end zone. Good throw and catch again. Their defensive backs were giving us a short pass, and, and uh, we, we took advantage of it. And again, you have to throw and catch and make the play. This is a long scoring drive starting at the seven-yard line. Two long scoring drives in this game shows the character of this offense. Here's a good throw and catch to Reggie Worthy. He's one step away from going about 80 yards. Critical play in the drive here is third and 10 at the 46. Third and 10, good protection. He throws the ball downfield. Marcel Willis makes a great adjustment on the ball, goes up and just beats the uh, defender for the ball. And Marcel had his best game. Yeah, I tell you, and, and he's had some good games, and this one is one of his better ones. Here's a quick throw to Clifton Robinson. They gambled. Uh, the guy misses the play, and Clifton goes the distance for the touchdown. And what a great drive that was. And I think it was one that really gave us a lot of energy on defense going in the rest of the fourth quarter, third and fourth quarter. You have to remember, they had, they had two weeks to study you guys. Two weeks to did. study, and that's, that's, a, that's very difficult. Again, we, we rolled up on the receivers, and that, again, that's the adjustment we made really helped out the, the defense the second half. Here's a, as a play that we just wish we had back. We run a boot and throw the ball downfield in double, double coverage and uh, get our intercepted for the second time in the game. That's very unusual for Ben Lear. But our defense steps back up. Uh, Don Terrius Thomas, uh, Roderick Chambers. Uh, we're not very big, but we're physical, and we make plays, and that's what it takes. Same drive, fourth quarter now. At the 27, going in, looks like. Fourth quarter, and giving Tyler the ball again. We've taken the guy out to cover on the pass, and they're starting to run the ball more. Here's a big play from Rodney Creighton, knocking the ball down from Boo Williams. Fourth and two at the 19. Fourth and two. They... They fake. Uh, we lose contain right there. Rob Page, you got to get up and make the play. They throw it into Larry Casher. And, uh, big play by Larry Casher. They, they put a lot into that one play. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's very difficult to go that far and not, not get points. Here's uh, Rudy on one of his runs. You know, Rudy rushed for 114 yards yep. again. Another 100-yard gain. And would have been a big one here, but this one's called back for a holding penalty, so the offense uh, gives the ball back. Yeah, they call holding, and, and again, that's just one of those things that happens. But, We've got to protect and not do that. Uh, you know, Rudy gets strong in the fourth quarter. Got to hold him again. Here's Tylee trying to get running uh, yards inside. Josh Weldon. Some of the guys, it's good to see Josh Weldon back out on the field. Third and 12. Good pressure by Reggie Torbor. Uh, good play by Rodney Creighton. And they have to punt it away. Punt it away. We get the ball down uh, inside the 10-yard line. Quick throw to Marcel Willis, and we get called for a late hit here. I haven't seen it seen the film yet but they call it on 49 there so really put us back in tough field position 
have to give it up, and they are at the 50 now. They throw a quick screen over the middle. It catches on a blitz, and uh, our linebacker failed to cover Fred Tiley, and he gets the ball down inside the 10-yard line, and I'm telling you, that was it's getting kind of scary about this time, but a goal line stand is all we needed. And, and they uh, kick the field goal. They, they elect to kick away. the field goal on fourth and five. Fourth and five. Three and out, and here they come again. Here they come. They throw the ball down the field. We're getting our, our uh, double coverage scheme again with two guys on the outside receiver, and Stanford Simmons comes up with a big play. Looks good right here, Coach, but it <laughs> looks good. We get everybody on the sideline. I always tell them, all you got to do is hold on to the football, and the ball game's over, and you can tell right there they do a good job of stripping the ball out and recovering it. Our defense has got to go back out on the field, and again, we gave them every opportunity, uh, but we took those opportunities away by making interceptions such as this oh. one by Rodney Creighton. What a, what a, a play by Rodney. That was the final brick in the victory. Final brick. We took a couple of knees, but then we had nine seconds on the clock. They were out of timeouts. We were up, uh, and I decided to go for a, a safety here, and safety took six seconds off the clock. I didn't want to punt out of the end zone with him an opportunity. Dangerous, yeah. He had, we had to protect, and that gave us only two guys to go down the field and, and tackle the returner. So we took an opportunity here to just take the safety with get no rush, kick. get the free kick at the 20-yard line. Uh, once they touch the ball, the clock starts. Uh, they do a little razzle-dazzle here, but we'd talked about it on the sideline. We weren't going to give them anything deep. Just have to make sure tackles, force them to run back and forth. <laughs> There's a good block with them. Nobody he, to hand it off to nobody this Nobody to hand it off to. Uh, Don Terrace Thomas gets him down and and uh, hard fought, but but the well Tigers, deserved. Tigers though. get the win. Man, seven and two, four and two in the conference, and leading the Western side. Who would ever thought it was two <laughs> games to go in an open date? It couldn't be a better scenario. We'll come back in just a minute. Go for the championship with our two biggest rivals coming up in an open date. It couldn't happen at a better time. Phil, we need a break. We uh, we're going to go out this week, practice on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, get our game plan in for Georgia, but mostly work our younger players, kind of have a, a mini spring practice, but we've got to get a lot of people healthy before we go into this last two games. Ronnie Daniels in particular. Ronnie Daniels, Tavares Pound dislocated his shoulder yesterday, but he'll be fine. Uh, you know, nothing structurally wrong, uh, but uh, probably half the team with ankles, bruises, uh, a, sp a spring shoulder, something's wrong with about everybody we've got, so it's, it, this open date's much needed. See you in two weeks on the Auburn Football Review. Thank you for watching. This has been an Auburn Network production. Lear to under center, waiting for the snap. He's got it. He lunges. Is he in? Yes! Touchdown, Auburn! Auburn wins in overtime, 29-26. What an amazing effort. You talking about a group growing up in about three quarters found yourself behind and you fought back. You beat the number 12 team in the country. <coughs> you know, you've come a long way in the last, you know, in the last three or four months. Nope, we started at number 55. And we told everybody that they were wrong. And you've been proving them wrong all year long. We've had a couple of setbacks. But you stayed in there and you hung with us. I'm proud of you. I love all of you. You've done a super job. Now we got one more. <laughs> that's what you came here for. That's the, that, that's the reason you came here. Plus, on top of that, if you win it, you're going to at least get a share of the conference championship on the western side. A lot, on, a lot at stake. Enjoy this one. Go home, get some rest, because we've got seven days to put in. Seven days. Thank you very much for what you did. Ball goes to our leader in season and out of season. He's been through more than anybody in his room, on the field and off the field. He's been consistent. He never let us get complacent. And uh, he's done a better job than I could ever do anyone on his team. Ben Leard.
And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers come back and beat Georgia in overtime 29 to 26. Full house at Jordan Hare on a Saturday night. Coach, what could be better? <laughs> well, what a what what an outcome. You know, oh. we get behind 13 and nothing and we fight back and we go ahead by 10. They tie it up and then we're going over Hey, those overtime games will make a coach old quick. <laughs> I bet. You have to, uh, you, you know, every phase of the game contributed. To, uh, there, were, there were moments, but every phase, kicking, defense, and offense. Well, if you look at every phase, every phase was good at one time and bad at one time. The kicking game was excellent, and then we had one blocked. Uh, offense didn't start out very well, but we ended up strong. Defensively, we started out well, but we ended up, up, up not, as, not as well as we would have hoped in, in regulation. But it was a great effort. Our seniors... You know, you got to take your head off of those guys. 7-0 at home, their senior year. Last game at Jordan-Hare Stadium, a big overtime victory against a, uh, a, a, a big rival game. Just couldn't end it up on a better note. You, you said it. Let's go to the dressing room now, and we talk mostly to seniors. There's a couple of juniors mixed in there. But, uh, you know, like all season, we don't quit. You know, this is one thing we really wanted to end this, end this streak at home, you know, to end up 7-0 at home. And, you know, it couldn't end it in a better fashion for me personally. Uh, the guys stepped it up all night. No matter who we put out there, uh, defensively, the guys stepped it up no matter what it was. Uh, Coach Love and the guys put, put together a good game plan. And uh, guys just went out and played with a lot of emotion, a lot of intensity. We had a lot of guys that really wanted this game. And, uh, you know, we, we're just taking the next step out of where we want to be. It was an unbelievable effort by our defense today. And we, just, we knew our offense would come around. But all we had to do is get on the ball and stop them in the situation we need to stop Georgia's defense in. And, and it came true for us. We were sitting there at the, when uh, we got first north and one. And uh, me, Josh, and, and Witt were standing there. And we said, uh, so we better watch this play for the rest of our life. Now we the last time they played us in, they beat us in overtime. So kind of good to finish off beating them in overtime. One more. One more. That's Alabama. And no need to say anything about Dallas. That would be. Oh, yeah. Go out and win the note. Beat Georgia. I think it's been like 10 years since we beat them at home. And, oh, it's beautiful. Now you got one more for the memory book next week. Huh? <laughs> That's right. It's going to be. That's going to be a game. It's going to be hard, hard, like always. I can't wait to get up there. You know, we came in expecting to win, but we didn't expect to go into overtime. But, uh, you know, our freshman year, we came in, we had to play them in overtime. And then we came back, we had to do it now. You know, it's, uh, it's really a great feeling for us to come out, you know, and be 7-0 and in Jordan here our senior season. And you guys, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good memory. You know, we get, get a good win. You know, we needed this one to even have a chance to win, you know, go to the SEC championship. So no better way to go out. Definitely a, a great one to uh, go out and win and, and sweep at home this year. Uh, and especially the way we did it, we, we fought our butts off. Uh, through that fourth quarter, you got kind of tight. And uh, I'm just real proud of our team, the way we stuck in there and, and the character of the team. I could tell all, all week that you were happy this was a night game. We all got our wish. And I tell you, it, it really worked out great for us. The fans were in Tiger Walk. It was a uh, full stadium. But we're going to have to get everybody an orange jacket. I know it's a lot of dark, <laughs> dark colors in the stands. Here's Tiger Walk, and boy, we got us off to a great start. Terry Henley on the right there, and the great Terry Beasley right there. He's into it, Coach. He uh, looked like he was ready to play. He was fired up, and here's, here's the Eagle coming out. And I, I still want our players to see this. They got to see it, Coach. It's kind of tough to, to get them out there on the field. That's when everybody's getting ready to play. But what a sight. War Eagle 6 is a 21-year-old female Golden Eagle. They train her. In fact, they had to train her for this night flight. I mean, Eagles, you know, Eagles roost at night. Right, that's uh, And what a show she put on. Can you can you believe that? What Man. a sight. I tell you, there's not a better college atmosphere in the country than Jordan-Hare Stadium and cool uh, fall night. Mm. What beautiful weather. Again, you can see all the dark jackets. I know everybody's bought those orange sweaters and shirts. Those but jackets we, are hard to find. We've got to find some orange. <laughs> orange jackets and finally uh, tiger lands and then uh, the war eagle is and pretty soon the tigers are coming out of the uh, dressing room uh, what a what a way to begin a football game Just what an atmosphere and fans were into it the students and it was great to see everybody there early pregame warm-up and here we start out we make them go on offense first we win the toss and they throw it out to terrence edwards and Boy, what swarm tackling. Our defense played about as good as we could play the first half. Okay. They really played hard. And then uh, Auburn gets a great drive going here on their first possession. Here's we, one of the great runs. We wanted to slow them down. They, they were very quick on defense, so we started running counter plays on them, and, and it worked on the first drive and uh, made some good throws. I tell you, you know, here's, here's one that wasn't, wasn't so good, but uh, Ben just overthrew the receiver and 
their guy just happened to be in the right place and they made what two or three first down the first half and yeah. had 13 points what an, yeah. what an amazing turnaround but most we hospitable coach most yeah hospitable. yeah we you always want to be nice to your visitors and here they put little Terrence Edwards at quarterback to give him a little speed on the corner running option and out from more on a big play there we worked on the option for the last two weeks I've been real surprised anybody run the option on us here's a second quarter now seven nothing here's another play that's given us problems all year a little quick screen and Rashad Walker makes the tackle we, we really tackle well the first half get the ball back here and Ben kind of forces it in the end of the zone coverage and they intercept it the second interception and uh, that's that's really unlike being to throw in the coverage like that twice and to hold them here to a field goal is very important very important Rashad Walker Alex Lincoln uh, defense just rose to the occasion held them to three points and that's all you all you can hope to do when you ever turn the ball over in the red zone third and nine here they're gonna get four big play out of Rashad Walker there and Bennett hits a 34 yard field goal he had uh, he had a great night <coughs> kicking the ball he made four out of four attempts he really did that left footed kicker very unusual still left footed kicker but uh, three and out for Auburn here they come again here's the option play again and we couldn't play it any better. Ryder could on the tackle. They have field Smith. position because of a partially blocked punt. There. Partially blocked punt, and they gave our kicking team a tough time last night. Here's a blitz, and they throw to the tight end, and Ryder could, uh, another young man from Georgia, on the, on the play. 37 yarder this time, and they're up 13 to nothing. 13 to nothing. It's a defense like that, coach. 13 to nothing with two first downs. And, uh, we knew we still had, had, had an opportunity. Here we give them another good field position. Uh, Whit Smith on the pressure from the outside. Alex Lincoln knocks the ball down. Big plays from the defensive side of the ball. Here comes Whit again. Whit on the cause fumble. Rashad Walker trying to pick it up. And Whit uh, gets a fumble recovery. And Don Dunn and Terry Price work on that fumble yeah. recovery every day. It's that amazing. Was great technique. He great technique. that thing up perfectly. <laughs> Here's a good throw and catch to Marcel Willis. What an important drive this turned out to be. Didn't seem that important at the time, but boy. Well, we needed make something happen here we go to no backs and we're just trying to work the ball down the field to have an opportunity for a field goal we knew uh, Damon had it in him on a long field goal and good throw and catch to Robert Johnson and two seconds on the clock here's a long field goal that thing could have been 80 yard field goal he kicked it so far and a lot of height really got the fans back into it it's just as important getting the fans involved it was the football team because we hadn't given our, our, our fans a lot to yell about but that was a great field goal all right we'll be back in just a minute you can be all ready for Christmas and uh, good Auburn fun around the house during the holidays. Coach, uh, down to 10 points to a very great defensive team, and your offense has done very little. I, I would ma imagine there were some serious meetings on at the half. We had a uh, little session with the offensive line at halftime. We just challenged them. We, we knew we're, we're, we're going to have to move the ball on the ground, not having to throw the ball. We had to move it on the ground to have a chance to win the football game, and they accepted the challenge, and... As we look at the second half tape, uh, we dominated the offensive line of scrimmage. So the way they were playing, uh, stopping the run, that just turned the defense loose on the passing game. They were coming hard, huh? It, it really did. And, it, and what happened there, their two defensive tackles were so good. We, we ran counter plays, and, and you have to give it to Noel Mazzoni and his offensive staff, uh, Eddie Grand, uh, Greg Knox, Tony Levine, uh, Hugh Nall. They came up with a two tight end scheme in the second half that really knocked them off balance. The, the naked bootlegs and, and the counter plays just really hurt them. How often do you add things at the half? Well, we got them in our game plan. We just have to look at what they're doing on, on defense to try to try to give us an advantage and try to, we basically, they run an overshift 50 front and we wanted them to balance their front up to where we had an opportunity to run both sides and that's what happened. Okay, the j and Bookstore Tiger of the game. Well, it has to be no doubt the guy that kept us in the game while we were struggling, Damon Duvall, our field goal kicker. He's, he uh, just had a uh, superb night. 48-yarder, 37-yarder, and a 59-yarder. That's not bad. That's a, that's a big day for a Congratulations kicker. to Damon Duvall quickly in this third quarter. Well, we, we get the opening kickoff, and we had to make a statement. If we were going to get the job done, it had to be at the beginning of the second half. And Watch this Roderick Hood. This is the first time he's fielded a kickoff. Well, Tim Carter, you know, got hurt in the first half and uh, took him to the hospital. He's fine. He just got a slight concussion, but Roderick Hood made a big opening half return. And, that got us in field position. And of course, here we go to two tight ends, what I was talking about in the break. And Gary, good block. Good, good block on the offensive line. And Rudy, you know, he's not going to outrun a lot of folks, but I tell you what, he's tough to get down. And another great game, 150 something yards. And, and uh, I think he broke one of Bo Jackson's records. There's a third and five coming up after throwing it and running it. Watch once. this hit. Uh, good throw, good catch, but he paid for it right there, Reggie Worthy. And 
I tell you what, another senior that's done an awful lot for Auburn University. Boy, well, what a consistent receiver he has been. What a reliable guy. Here they come back, and uh, we're just making them, we're going to force them to throw the football. They, you know, they, they haven't been successful on our defensive line. Roger Third and Chambers, three. Uh, DeMarco McNeil played another great game. There's our young fre freshman running back that's going to be a great player. Larry Cash on the tackle. Here we come back and run the bootleg off the same play that we almost scored on a while ago, and there's Robert Johnson with a big catch. Had a couple of catches. First and 10 now at the 45. First and 10 on the outside. Good blocking on the outside by Mike Pasello. Marcel Willis. This is, a, this is some of the tight end old, uh, bags yeah, in Yeah, there. all of it's two tight ends, and we just made them balance up and call their hand and see if we could execute. There's a big third down play to Lorenzo Diamond on the little naked bootleg. Lorenzo had some good blocks. Had some good blocks, and here's, here's a big kick by Damon. 37-yarder, uh, ties the game. We tied the game up on two possessions and really, really got everybody back into it, the fans and players on the sideline. And, uh, Rob Pate played one of his better games, oh, an interception yeah. and a big tackle right there. Alton Moore. They punt, Auburn punts. Here's their third possession of the half. Here's a big play. They run a little isolation draw, and there you see the ball's knocked out right there. And a good call by the official. I tell you what, that's a gutty call. He sees the ball come out, and, and uh, we just fall on it. Mark Brown gets the fumble recover and a big turnover. Going the other way. Back to our two tight ends running that same play we ran look earlier. Just look at this. Just guy. watch that hit right there. Just knocks the guy down and you can, he just punished him at it. And again, Rudy's done it for us all year. Fourth and two. Fourth and two. New new play we put in. Fake it to Heath around the middle and good run by Rudy just to get the first down by about a foot. Now the fourth quarter. And fourth it's quarter and, and then it's it's an amazing fourth quarter. Here's a good throw and. Old faithful Ronnie Daniels is back in the action. Old Gimpy Daniels. <laughs> yeah, he's not full speed, but I tell you what, he, he's a gamer. He plays hard. Here's our defense coming back, and good pass rush. Big lick right there by Larry Cashner. They tried to pick on Larry a couple of times, but he rose to the occasion. Here comes a third and five in the interception. Third and five. Look we get pressure. good pressure by James Cowyer up the middle. He throws it up for grabs, and Rob Pate, on, again, just played one of his best games he's played since he's been at Auburn. Another senior that's went out on a great note. Get it down to the 33, and here comes Damon Duvall. 59-yard field goal. 59-yarder. I tell you what, that's he earned his earned his pay this game. Here's a good pressure right here by Josh Wellen. We have him in their end zone, big lick, and makes him throw it into the ground. And uh, Josh Wellen, he continues to get better. He's just now getting healthy. There, you can tell the chemistry on this football team. That's how you win these close games. These guys pulling together. Here's a throw and catch on a third and 10 to Marcel Willis. We don't quite make the first down. I decide to punt, and we had some new guys on the punt protection team, and, and we just didn't protect properly, and, and uh, they, they blocked the punt, and I tell you what, that, that almost turned it around for them. We did my arithmetic on that field goal coach, and this was, it was a 49-yarder, but still an excellent kick. Yeah, you, you, your arithmetic never been very good, but there's That's a right. good throw and catch to Terrence uh, Edwards, but... Uh, Rashad Walker, again, had played one of his better games. We tackled a lot better in this game. I tell you, this is a good football team. They get the ball in their hands, these wide receivers. Here you can tell we we uh, we don't blow the coverage. They just put four wide receivers out and split the seams and make a big play. And They get the ball back here again, throwing down the field, intercepted by Mark Brown, uh, but we had 12 men on the field. And again, that's my fault. We we were having to play, play Reggie Torbor, linebacker, and we didn't get the substitution right, and boy, it almost cost us the game. And they they take it down, and uh, he steps out of bounds at the two right there. Who I thought he was in, I too, but too. we forced him out, ran out of real estate, and forced him to kick the field goal. And so Bennett kicks his fourth field goal of the night. They take the tie. We go into overtime. Yeah. I think Winning the toss was important here, Coach. <laughs> it really was. We wanted to be on defense first. You want to be on defense to tell where you're, what you've got to do when you get the ball. And again, Ben Lear's giving the guys a little pep talk here. Uh, they run the ball to the outside. Uh, we the can first and ten at the 14. Here comes second and six. Second and six. This is probably the biggest play. Good tackle right there. Mark Mark Brown, Mark Brown played, played a good game. They throw it incomplete, and now on fourth and four, they kick the 25-yard field goal. Well, no, we know what we got to do now, Bill. We, our guys know, know they got to score a touchdown. There's a good block by Heath Evans. Barrel the ball up inside with Rudy. Good blocking the offensive line. Their defensive line is getting tired. Here's Third a new play two. that we ran. We didn't run it the whole game. What a block by Hartman Gary on the outside. Those guards pulling. They were really. Oh, they did a super they were job. And ready. They were ready to go. And here's a quick throw to 
Uh, Marcel Willis get it down to about the seven eight yard line. Big but play here's here. the play. Same play we ran the play before Ooh. for the outside. They're going to learn to tackle Rudy up uh, up high and grab a hold. He I thought he had scored. We got it to the one foot line and here's the play that uh, we all want to see in overtime. We call this Chevy. Chevy. Uh, Chevy. It's just an old Chevy. We just barrel it up the middle and that's that's the quickest I've seen Kendall Simmons all year long getting up off the ground. That's Auburn lost the last time in in what three or four overtimes at Georgia. And yeah. What four. a win! Four. Yeah. What a win for these seniors, Phil. I tell you, they to go out on a note like that just and the, and the fans. You know, they support us and seven and zero at home. We'll be back with a final word. Welcome back. Who says there isn't a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow? Auburn found one in Tuscaloosa yesterday. After the rain cleared, the Tigers had a shutout victory over arch rival Alabama and SEC West Championship and a trip to Atlanta. Man, how sweet it is. And uh, we needed help. And my hat goes off to Arkansas. What about them pigs? And, uh, you know, we just knew if we stuck it out, we didn't have to worry about what was going to happen in the West. We talked about this week. The chip's going to fall where they're going to fall. And, and we had something special about this team. And I think, you know, things are happening for us. And, and to see Arkansas come up and beat a talented Mississippi State team, uh, we're going to go and, and give it our best effort and, and make the SEC West proud. The Tigers didn't fare much better than Alabama offensively, riding the strong leg of three Damon Duvall field goals, but defensively, they dominated, holding the Crimson Tide to just 23 yards rushing and 112 yards passing. They also forced two turnovers and had three sacks. The players called it the best effort of the season. They have tough running backs. They have good receivers that can make plays happen uh, with the weather. I mean, it's hard to play in a game like that and keep your mind on the game plan and not think, well, let me run over there to the heater and, and get my mind off the game plan. Our young guys just stepped up and made a tremendous effort. And you get to a point where you, you say, hey, unless we give up the big play, they're not going to score on us. And, and, and we were all over the sidelines when, when right before Rudy fumbled, we said, just kick another field goal, you know, because we just felt like they weren't going to score on us. Auburn coach Tommy Tuberville got the Bama monkey off his back, beating them for the first time after losing five straight, dating back to his days at Ole Miss. He says it's a win for the whole university. You're playing for the rights to be, to, to brag, to, to talk about it, and again, to beat them on the road. I mean, it took them 10 years to beat Auburn in Auburn. It took us one year. And uh, uh, it's, you know, it's, that just makes it so much sweeter. The Tigers moved up one spot in the latest college football poll. Angle back to the right. They'll put it on the far hash mark. Duval kicks it away out of the hole of Fesco. And that one is up and good. We're down to eight seconds to Tuscaloosa. Auburn's going to win this game. Auburn's going to win the SEC title in the West Division. The Tigers have defeated Alabama nine to nothing. You came to play, and you came to play for four quarters. That's the reason we won that football game. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's one guy in here we need to take our hat off to. I'm going to tell you what, last two weeks, he's been the, the major difference in us being here. Duval. Damon Duval. Hey. Defense, that's about as good as effort you'll ever see. Give yourself a Hell hand. Yeah. <laughs> Offensively, we got the job done. You know, you could tell that everybody keeps coming together the whole game. There was never any doubt. Everybody just kept kept coming together. I'm proud of you. All the coaches are proud of you. Those 20,000 people out there are proud of you. You guys have come a long way. Unfortunately, you got yourself into another week. How about them rings we're going to get on the ring? <laughs> One thing we're going to do for a few days is we'll, we're going to live on this victory because I'm going to tell you something. It's been 100 years, and in the beginning of the year, 
Not one person, not one person outside of this room gave you a dog chance to be where you're at. I'm talking about not anybody. You've accomplished something that nobody maybe in history has ever done. Come from so far down, come so far up. And it's because you're a team. We're not overly talented in a lot of areas, but we got more heart than probably most of the teams put together. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love every one of you. Be careful going home. Be careful going home. Remember what I always tell you, be careful going home. Live on this one. If you want to, you can go back out there and holler at them folks. Yes, yeah, yeah. Go to the family. This, this game, this game we won tonight, was for Auburn University. Right. This is for Auburn. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers score an historic 9-0 win over Alabama. Tuscaloosa and coach, the Cinderella is going to the ball. Uh, what a tremendous victory for Auburn University and for this football and athletic program. It couldn't come at a better time to a great group of kids and fans. Uh, coaching staff just did an outstanding job. And, uh, Alabama pro played hard defensively. They couldn't get anything going offensively, but our guys played hard and we had a lot of outstanding performances. Let's go to the dressing room. Well, you know, they're just like anybody else. You want to stop the running game and not give up the big play. And, and we didn't do either of those things. And, and, and uh, you know, that's why we were successful. It, it, it means a lot to us because, you know, where I came in, SCD, you know, West Champs, where I'm going at. This time we just had to win it. Man, we, everybody was saying on the sideline that uh, Arkansas had beat Mississippi State. And, you know, that kind of fired everybody up. You know, we, we knew we had to win the game now. Yeah, as close as they got to the goal line was when you all got the intercept. You tipped the ball, didn't you? Yeah, I, I batted it up, and uh, Pate stuck with me and uh, picked it off. Well, we have been looking at film all week, and we saw a lot of lot of wrinkles in their defense, and we knew we could come out and execute all along. It doesn't matter the time that we had to do it. It's, it's so beautiful. I, I, I can't explain how I feel right now. Well, explain how y'all shut them out. We just swung to the ball. We just Everybody on defense gave 100% up. Uh, I was just concentrating on getting the ball. I wasn't trying to make too much happen. Just uh, It was going to be a field position game. And just catching them, uh, just trying to win the field position battle. Um, you know, they did a great job. Michael Lindsay on punts did a great job. And, you know, Jeremy Wells and Justin Fesco on field goals, you know, the ball's out there wet, it's muddy. You know, they did a great job handling it. And, you know, Justin did a great job hitting the spot even in the rain and being cold, you know. And, you know, I couldn't have done it without them. Going to Atlanta was uh, one of the seniors' goals this year, and to be able to accomplish that is it, it, really saying something for us. Uh, it really shows the character of these guys, and, uh, and I'm, I'm just happy to play with these guys. You're a championship quarterback. Glad to be there. Uh, you know, it, 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 in times in my career, I haven't looked, looked like that, but fortunately, you know, we've been able to fight through with the unity and the faith among this team. It's immeasurable, and, uh, you know, we're just happy to be where we're at today. This man right here is the reason we 9-2. and two. He's been the heart and soul of his offense. He's been the best leader we've ever had around here. A silent assassin, baby. A quiet killer. We're killing him all year. We all took an oath to... Advisory panel, but they... Anyway, weather was about as miserable as it could be, Coach. And, you know, the players and the coaches, nobody ever said anything about it. Uh, <laughs> they were so into the football game. It was one of those where people were just ready to play, and uh, we were all excited. You can tell this is Tiger Walk, and when we... The buses, you can tell the buses are getting ready to arrive in just a moment, and... We couldn't tell where the beginning of the Tiger Walk started. Yeah, that's my wife, <laughs> Suzanne. And, and, uh, He's I'd ducking say, that camera, Coach. Well, it was a, <laughs> here's the team coming in. We had a great escort from, the, from all the troopers and the city policemen there in Tuscaloosa. Uh, 
we had to zigzag through this tiger walk just so we could uh, get to the dressing room. But it was a great scene and great send off to the start of the game. And there's Ronnie Daniels. He's one of the crowd favorites. And just a moment, uh, you're going to see uh, Rudy. There's Rudy coming through. I'm sure Rudy had a tough time getting through those those 15, 20,000 fans. But uh, it was a great sight. And here's yeah, he the doesn't cheerleaders. like heavy traffic, does he? Doesn't like heavy traffic. There's cheerleaders uh, leading the team out. And it was a great college atmosphere. It was a little sleet before the game. The field wasn't really in bad condition. It was, uh, it was a little, little chilly. Uh, but uh, as I said, the players and coaches didn't really notice it because this is the Alabama game. This is what you may have feared, Coach. You didn't want them to get off to a good start. Well, we, we wanted them to handle the ball first, and they run a quick screen like that right there to McAdley, and they caught us playing off a little bit too far. And here's a bootleg pass, but uh, Stanford Simmons tips the ball up. Rob Pate intercepts, and that was basically the only threat of the ball game. It's been great to see Rob Pate come on and have a good finish. It really has. I tell you, he's come on really strong the last four or five weeks. It's been tough for him. This Here's third and 19. Third and 19 over the middle, Lorenzo Diamond, and we make it by foot. Uh, that, that's kind of how the ball game went. It was Lorenzo had one of his best games as an Auburn Tiger. Uh, here's a high snap by Michael Lindsay, and they roughed the, the punter. Uh, they called uh, running into instead of roughing. It looked a little roughing to me, but uh, we took the punt. Ball went down to about the eight yard line, and we decided to make them start and go. Uh, it led to your score, though. Two yards. Led to the score. Here you can tell. Uh, DeMarco McNeil on the toss sweep making the play. Our defensive line dominated their front. It was it was just fun to see us get off blocks and make tackles. Here's here's one of their running backs, and we have four or five guys on the tackle. Courtney Rose, Alex Lincoln. Classic tackle by Lincoln. Third and eight. Here's shotgun, no backs in the backfield. We put good pressure and uh Whit Smith on on the sack and Whit's really come on strong too after his shoulder surgery last year and really proud of his efforts. Third and five, run the draw. Third and five, Heath Evans up the middle and uh, oh Heath, uh, you know he runs a four, five, four, six and they caught him from behind. Victor Ellis there makes a, uh, a saving tackle, gets the ball to almost the nine yard line. We can't score, but uh, three points in this type of weather was just as good as a touchdown. Last play of the quarter, Auburn goes up three nothing. Second quarter now, their first drive. Their first drive. Uh, they were going to throw the quick screen, and we didn't. We didn't blitz a time this game. I can't remember when we didn't have a blitz in a ball game, and uh, that was out. Uh, Javar Mills on the on the tackle. Here's the, a fake reverse. They were going to throw deep. Great pressure on him, and James Callier on the coverage on the back coming out of the backfield. They scored on us on that play last year. Auburn is three and out. Here they come again. They throw a quick pass. Larry Casher wasn't going to have anything to do with this. Larry's really improved his technique over the last few weeks, and. Uh, Third and long. He's going to have to continue to improve. Here's another quick screen. We made him bring it down. We caused a fumble. They fumble the ball forward. They get it. They, they recover it, uh, but it makes it uh, uh, fourth down in about six inches, and they, they decide to punt. Now it's their next possession. Next possession. Again, we force them to throw the ball short. We break up. We have really tackled well the last two weeks mm -hmm. in open field, and I think that's been the big difference on defense. Okay, now Auburn starting its uh, next scoring drive. Here's a throw to DeAndre Green from Mobile, Alabama, over the middle, and I'd say he made him made him pay for that tackle. He's he's getting stronger every week. Third and one, right here. Our Big offensive line, down. you can tell they're blocking. We're cutting people from the outside. Rudy makes it one of his uh, five-yard gains out of nothing, and uh, it's uh, we're starting to make make the ball game happen on the ground here. There was one disappointment. It was in the, in, in the red zone scoring touchdown. Red zone scoring touchdowns. But again, we'll take these field goals in this bad weather because three points are just as good as touchdowns in, in infinite weather. Here's right before the half. They make a desperation throw, and Rodney Creighton makes a great play on the ball down the sideline. And that basically takes us in for halftime. One last uh, play. After the draw play, there's a, there's a play by uh, Javar Mills. Again, he played probably one of his best games. So Auburn goes in at the half with a 6 nothing lead. We'll be back in just a minute. Something every Auburn fan needs to commemorate Saturday's historic win over Alabama, it's the official score shirt from Master Graphics and the Auburn Network. Now to order, you just call that number, 1-800-208-2112. And as you can see on the screen, we have both the T-shirts and the sweatshirts available. You can get a close-up look at the shirt and order online on our website, www.aunetwork.com. How many shirts do you think you're going to need, Coach? I've already ordered my six or seven dozen. I want to remember this for a long time. 
Okay, just leave the check right here. Now for the information on SEC championship game tickets, just call the Auburn Network office. It's 1-800-AUB-1957. You can also find all the information on the front page of our website, www.aunetwork.com. And the J&M Bookstore Tiger of the Game. We're going to give it to the 20,000 loyal Auburn fans that just sat in, the stand, sat in those cold stands, wet, uh, but they pulled us to, uh, all the way to victory. And they cheered and stayed. And stayed, and probably some of them are still there. <laughs> I don't doubt it. <laughs> Congratulations to the Auburn fans who made the trip to Tuscaloosa. The J&M Tiger of the Game, presented by J&M Bookstore. Yards of offense first half, you have to feel if you can get one more score, you got a pretty good chance. And we were getting the, the ball, the opening drive of the second half, and we felt like, felt like that was going to be a big key because uh, a, a, a more than a two-score lead over, the, over a, a team in this kind of weather is, mm. is hard to come back. I uh, felt good. We talked to our team about playing four quarters. Last year, we played three. We lost the game in the fourth quarter, but we were going to play four tonight. And here's the opening kickoff of the second half, and Roger could. Boy. Uh, this is second two two games in a row in this opening kickoff of the second half. He's ran the ball out past the 40 yard line. You gotta be fearless to do that, Coach. Well, you really do. He runs straight up. He runs straight ahead. He doesn't go uh, sideways. And what a great return! Goes got us off to a good start. Here's a throw to DeAndre Green for a first down on the sideline cut. Uh, ben Laird had a good game, not a great one, but again he continues to win games, and that's mm -hmm. what football is all about. Third and one. Third and one, we run the boot pass, caught him off guard. They were slanting inside, and uh, Lorenzo Diamond on the big catch down the sideline. Watch this run, folks. Here's one of Rudy's classics. Uh, this is Heisman stuff here. He uh, breaks several tackles. Uh, he makes several guys pay for it, and uh, all the way down to the nine-yard line. But uh, run the fade route on the goal line, and uh, they intercept, and so they're going the other way now. You got to hold them again. Going, going again. This was a critical point right through here. B big crit. We we had to slow them down. We lost the momentum with that interception. James Callier made that play. Here they put Freddie Millens in at quarterback. We knew it, they'd do this sooner or later, and uh, uh, we take it to them. We we worked on the option, and we won't. Last year he beat us running that play. This year he wasn't going to do it. Uh, here we get the ball back. We run a boot, and the ball gets tipped right here at the line of scrimmage. He was throwing to Lorenzo Diamond. They make a good interception. But I tell you, they get the ball at the 40-yard line and end up having to punt. This is critical. Uh, from, from on their side of the field. Our defense really rose to the occasion here. We knocked the ball loose, but they recovered it. Uh, here's a big play inside. Javar Mills on the outside. DeMarco McNeil. Well, oh. Those two players right there have come a long way. Babies, too, Coach. Just one-year guys. One-year guys and playing hard. Uh, there's a lot of people already left the stadium. Third and eight now, going Third the other eight. way. Uh, we get the ball back on the 10 yard line, throw the ball out to Keith Evans, and he breaks two tackles and gets the ball out to the first down. That was probably the, one of the biggest plays of the game, just Big to first down. keep the ball m moving and keep the clock going and get field position. Here's a toss sweep on the outside. Oh, there's Victor Ellis getting run over there by Rudy. Oh. I'm sure he'll remember that today. <laughs> uh, but uh, just a great run. Rudy's done that to several players this year, and you could tell he was making them wear down a little bit. And, Here's the inside move, but Javar Mills making making uh, Andrews out get out of the pocket. And that was one of the game plans, just make him get outside and throw him the run. Now we're in the fourth quarter. Now, in this fourth quarter, Auburn keeps the ball 12 of the 15 minutes and uh, plays like this, and Rudy, Rudy Johnson. Who's Lorenzo Diamond on the interception, I mean, on the completion, and, and they really hit him there. They made him pay for it. Uh, I tell you, their defense came to play. They've got some good football players, but... Uh, uh, we just turned Rudy loose on him in the fourth quarter, and as he's done all year long, he's just dominated. Like and Herbert Mims said, Coach, he's a wise man, and uh, we think he ought to be the highest man next year. <laughs> well, he should be one of the front runners. There's Rashid Salim on one of his tackles, and again, you know, the, we decided here to go go downtown after running Rudy and a big throw and catch to uh, DeAndre Green. And, uh, Great game for him. We didn't. We can't get it in from there. We decided to kick the field goal, and that basically got the job done. Uh, they played great defense inside they the red, red zone. That's they, they played hard. You got to take the hat off to Mike Dubose and his coaching staff. You know they, they knew this was their last game, but uh, they coached hard and uh, they had them well prepared. And, uh, you just you got to feel for them for their last game. Here's a another pressure by Mills. Here's a sprint out by by Zow. And Again, we wanted him out of the pocket and and uh, uh, defensively in the secondary we really played well. Here's a play we call truck uh, truck to the right and uh, Rudy just this he hurts his ankle right here on the. On the, on the tackle out of bounds and and uh, really was slowed up for the rest, but he, he's going to be fine. He's, we're just going to have to get some ice on it, get him ready for in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Here's a big run by Heath Evans. Again, Heath, uh, a fresh Heath Evans is awful <laughs> strong in the fourth <laughs> Not quarter. Bad. 
Not bad, particularly in this type of game where it's mostly inside running. Here's a toss to Rudy, and again, Rudy's running on a sore ankle and carrying the ball 30-something times is a tough assignment in the SEC. The drive didn't get any, uh, didn't pay off, but it was five and a half minutes off the clock, and that's really what you were looking for. Here's another big sack by DeMarco McNeil. I tell you, he had a great game. That young man from Mobile has come a long way. There's Reggie Torborn. Here's a field goal. They tried to get to three points and then try to kick an onside kick, and he kicked it short, and and uh, that was a ball game, and you could hear all 20,000 fans, and again, good luck to Mike Dubos. He's a great person, got a lot of character, and uh, this conference is going to miss him. We'll be back with the final word in just a minute. It's 20th anniversary at Auburn with a brand Delta Airlines. Delta carries more passengers worldwide than any other airline. Quick word about our sponsors, our longtime uh, sponsors who've supported us over the years, Coach. It's great to have them, and they come back year after year. Well, we do appreciate them because it, it, it takes sponsors to, to, to do things like we do, and uh, uh, they do a great job and, and sacrifice a lot. Coach, your program has moved fast. You've, you've, you've got a uh, division championship and going to the championship game second year. That, what does that mean? Well, you know, last night's game was state championship, Western Division championship, and three months ago, nobody gave us a chance to get to the conference championship game. We're going to play Florida. We're going to need everybody there. We're going to need orange in the stands, and we've got a good chance. We just need to be there and, and be positive. Uh, this will be a different team going to play Florida than the team that went down the game. We're better than we were a month and a half ago. Uh, Florida's still a good football team. They've I think got a lot of confidence, talent. don't you think? Yeah, confidence. Uh, but again, we're not playing in the swamp. The swamp's a tough place to play. Yeah. Uh, playing on a neutral field and neutral site, neutral fans. Uh, we'll have uh, as many as we can, tickets we possibly can get. Ten seconds on your plans for the next two weeks. Next two weeks, we're going to take a few days off, have Thanksgiving. Uh, Thank the good Lord for what's happened to us, and then, and then uh, uh, go back to work this weekend for the conference championship game. Okay. Glad to have you aboard. We'll see you next year on the Auburn Football Review.